tell you what, I like Texas, just not in the summer. I don't like my ball sticking to my leg. It's probably, you can't kick them off. You just can't kick them off. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Texas in the summer, them fuckers are sticking. You're like bat wing that shit. One ball one side, one ball the other side. You're fucking, you're cooked. How do they do that all summer? I have or no idea. Year? They have, must have more baby powder than, than I do. And I have a lot of baby powder in my house. I like Texas in the winter, though. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. It's the, pretty nice. The sunshine state. I don't think that's right. <laughs> All right, let's go. Fuck it. All right, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Wait, welcome to the HWMF podcast. I'm your host, Seth Ferrosi, with my heterosexual life mate, Bob. Howdy. And Shane over there. I miss Shane. I love making fun of him. I miss making fun of him. I know. We were making fun of each other. I wasn't into it. I know. It was tough. It was tough. It was tough being away for so long, Shane. I missed you guys, too. It's been a while. You're, really a, li- good you're a lion. I liked it here. All right, shut the fuck up. We got, a, we got work to do. <laughs> fuck off. I got work to do. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So we are back. We spent the weekend together down in Texas. Mm-hmm. We went for some seminars and meet and greets. Texas is a big state for us. It's a big state, period. Everything's bigger there. You, you, you mentioned a number of times you felt bigger in Texas. I did. Did you show Kim you were bigger in Texas? Yep. Yep. Fucking right. I never, walked, I never watched somebody walk more confidently into their house to get pussy than you did last night when I dropped you off. <laughs> Bro, I went in with a plan. <laughs> Cowboy hat on. You were like, yep, yep, I'm going in. Went in really loud, put everything down really firm, wake her up. Did you? Yep, show dominance. There you go. Yep. Letting her have it. Did you leave the cowboy hat on while you were going at it? Did you start with the cowboy hat on? I mean, I went up and, yeah, I, I walked upstairs. She was already in bed. She was sleeping. And she woke up and saw me there with the cowboy hat on. Man. I got the eyes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had to feel good. It felt great. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> I love it. I took it off, though. I didn't want to jeopardize any kind of performance or anything. Not only that, I mean, I know I went home and I was borderline... Let's just say I, I gave it my all, but it was definitely not my best. <laughs> a little too far, a little too away from home for too long. I would have been worried about shooting the hat off my head. <laughs> <laughs> I have done that a dime or two to myself. Uh-huh. Get all excited. I used. I tell people my pullout game used to be phenomenal. <laughs> I question it now. <laughs> Not no more. Uh, now I'm. I'll go back to being an amateur. But uh, no, it was good. We had a blast in Texas. I had an absolute. It was fucking awesome. Stores were awesome. Awesome. awesome Treated people. us well. Like great hospitality. I, uh, set up perfectly. Bro, the stores that we're doing business with these these big brick and mortar stores that have twenty, thirty, forty, fifty stores, um, and. You know, it's so awesome because we're building a relationship with them. You know, these are big stores that are hard to get into. They take their jobs very serious. They take their stores serious because bro, whenever you have multiple stores and like, I mean, like 20 or 30, bro, it's hard to run your shit like we do. Oh, we're, yeah. we're busy motherfuckers. And I mean, they, they do an excellent job with their people, their training, everything. Rocks, we went to Rocks Discount uh, and uh, Santiago was the guy. Little tidbit, I'll tell everybody that joke or that thing that I said uh, in a previous podcast about about whenever I'm not, I don't belong in fucking in, in meetings. <laughs> You're not allowed. Yeah, I'm not allowed in sales meetings because I just become so fucking passionate, overbearing, and like take everything, like I take everything to heart. Um, that that phone call was about Santiago. Because we just come out of the gate as a company, and he's like, hold your fucking horses, boys. And I'm like, well, why don't you go fuck yourself? <laughs> but in, in now, and now being at his stores and seeing how he runs everything and seeing how it goes, bro, they're serious. They have a very high, high standard with everything. It's phenomenal. Same thing with Five Star Nutrition. Whenever we went down to North Carolina, Shane, you were there. Shane was there. <laughs> he just nodded and said, he's like, I'm not, I'm not saying anything anymore. <laughs> no, same thing. Tremendous people. Such a well-trained staff, just outstanding. When you do business with those people, it's just it's it's awesome because they even say we normally don't do these things. Um, and whenever we do, and and the, every deal that we do is based on longevity for both parties. Mm-hmm. Both got to make money, motherfuckers. Sure, mm-hmm. got to be fair. You got to eat, I got to eat. 
and we got to supply something to the customers that is top notch and they spend their money on. And you made a comment to me about how they ran shit there in uh, at Rocks. Yeah. I was busy with people kissing babies, shaking booby. Nope, I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, after the first day, after Saturday, you were like, man, this place is pretty, they're, they're pretty badass here. And you stated that people were just coming up with like a bunch of supplements, like armful, like three, four or five products. Yeah. And they'd put them down and they'd add ah, that then the, <clears throat> the staff, the staff, the person, the person checking them out would ask, Hey, do you know how to use these products? Yeah. They didn't just take their money. No. It could just took their money. No, the, everyone there was there to buy. They were there to buy something. Yeah. They didn't have to sell anything. They were there to buy. Um, and multiple people, they ask, like, do you even know what the product does? What are your goals? How do you, how do you use it? Uh, the, the one girl was buying like a, a weight loss pill or something. Okay, you should start with this. You should start with for one a day. Get your tolerance. Like explaining everything. The education, top fucking notch. That's not everywhere. Fuck no, it's not, dude. It's badass. Yeah. That's really fucking... I mean, that's... Bro, it was every single one. The line was 50 deep. <laughs> there was to, a lot of people to pay there. for shit. I mean, you, you just had to take their money. So you had to do... You could have just said, fuck it. Give me your no, money. Break, breaking pen and paper out, writing a note here. Do you take this? Man. Do this? Awesome. And it was every single staff member. They all worked as if it was their own. Man. That's tough to fucking do. Fucking right it is. I would, whenever you said that, because everything went so smoothly. I mean, even the same thing with Five Star when we went. It was so smooth. Mm -hmm. Again, same type of atmosphere there. The training that those guys do at Five Star as well, bro, they are fucking on it. Just train. Everybody knows everything about the products. And it's like, man, this just rolls into everything about us. We love service. We love good service. Like good service, and they, they did an excellent job there. We also went down to Victoria, Texas, mm -hmm. Complete 360, big store for us, one of the first stores to fucking come on board whenever we opened up Axe and Sledge. Yep. Awesome people. Really cool store, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they did a really good job. Mm -hmm. Really good job. I'm impressed. Had a cooler of beer there? I know, for everybody. Uh, bro, that seminar was a good time. Yeah, it was a good seminar. Had food, snacks, beers. They were pumped up. Couple, dude. Sh couple shots. Yes, good. Oh yeah, we did. <laughs> showed up with a bottle of whiskey, and there you go. Yep. You know, uh, I man, I can't thank people enough for everything. Mm -hmm. This is so cool because, bro, one thing is for motherfucking sure about what we do. We change people's mindsets. We change people's attitudes. We're changing people's lives. I can't tell you the number of people that said. They waited in a fucking line. Dude, the lines were long as fuck again. Waiting in line for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. Like, all to just tell me something. Grown fucking men. Lots of ladies, too. Lots of women. Moms and, and wives and... Girlfriends. Yep. I mean, the couples. Daughters, the like, number of couples that, were, that came is just, it still floors me. Yeah. It is so awesome. But changing their life all for the better. Bro, there was over two dozen people that said, you changed my life. Because of what you said in one video. I didn't know who you are. I was searching on, uh, searching on YouTube how to find out how to lose weight or this or that. And they were like, all of a sudden, you popped up. And it seemed like, ah, oh, it seemed like a good. So the graphics must have got him or something. You're welcome. Yeah, we're doing or, a good job. <laughs> good job, Shane. <laughs> and uh, uh, Or the titles of it, you know, how to look good naked. You know, you are what you eat. Yep. And then in there, I would say these fucked up things about how my head works. Like, hey, dude, if I look down and I can't see my dick, I got a fucking problem. I like looking down in the morning, see my dick, kind of hard or stiff as a motherfucker. Stroke him a little bit, wake up. <laughs> hey, bud, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, you want to jerk off? Great. Let's go. <laughs> ah, rub it on her. Look at her. Rub it on there. Ah, I'm all excited. Whenever I talked like that, these people were like, fuck, dude, I ain't doing that. The one kid was, he's, he was in his mid-20s. He said, I looked down, I couldn't see my dick. And I was like, oh, my God, I got I to gotta stop eating. The little shit that I said, binge-watched all my fucking videos, and then the dude never stopped working. Lost 100-plus pounds in a fucking year. 100-plus pounds. Yeah, he's a different person. That's what I'm saying. Bro, these people's lives are changing because of this, because of what we're doing, and I fucking love it. Like, you can't get me to fucking be 
I couldn't imagine being any more motivated, but after coming back from there and hearing all these stories about people and couples, how couples, I mean, it's fucked up, but couples say, yeah, we're fucking hard again. I'm like, yes, that's great. Hammer that bitch. Yeah, bro, these Suck people. that dick. I don't know what to tell you. Good job. Great. You guys having fun? Did you film it? Can I see it? I don't know what, how, how should I be excited? Let's see how intense this was. Give you a couple pointers. No, bro. they, bro, they were glowing. Like, and. I said to so many people that lost weight because I lost a bunch of weight since I started working with you. They glow, dude. I can see how happy they are. Unreal. Yeah. Unfucking real. And it, it, like I said, dude, it's not one or two. It's so many. In the demographic of people that are listening to this part, the demographic of people that were in that fucking line, hundred and some people deep, and I'm looking at this and I'm like, this isn't like one type of person. There's young people, there's old people, there's middle-aged people, there's people that that just want to look good naked, there's bodybuilders, there's powerlifters, women, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, you fucking name it, they were there. See, Arnold, same people. Yeah. We're not talking to one type of person. We're talking to fucking everybody. And I could not be more fucking proud because all these people just want to become motherfucking better. Like, bro, all they want to do is become a better version of themselves. That's it. They're willing to work. Nobody's ever told them to do things the way I'm telling to, telling them to. I'm not saying do a good job. I'm saying fuck shit up. I'm not saying like, oh, you should love your wife. I'm saying fuck your woman. Make her feel you. Slap that ass. Make her tell a story about you. Don't talk about other women. Don't be like, oh, don't go scrolling through Instagram loving bitches and all the stupid shit making her feel like shit. Bro, love your woman and she will love you unlike any fucking one else. Yeah. And people are listening. It's awesome. Pretty cool. Bro, it's fucking outstanding. I couldn't, uh, I mean, bro, it was everybody. Mm-hmm. It was everybody. Texas was good time. Thank you to everybody in Texas. We will be doing some more traveling throughout the year. We have, uh, there's a couple other places we're probably going to go. Um, Texas is, I mean, the only thing I hate about Texas is the summertime. Nope. Fuck that heat, dude. The, the heat and the snakes and the spiders and the fucking nope. No. Not I even it. said to a couple people, I was like, oh, you get used to that heat, you know, living here. And they're like, no, dude, you don't. <laughs> you don't. No. <laughs> Bro, what, what was it? We went down and. We went down in July. Yeah, in July. Oh, God. Bro, it was so hot. I, it was yeah. so hot. The AC in the car, like, didn't even do anything wasn't, to us. Wasn't even cool. Nope. Oh. Nope. I re- remember we walked out. Uh, our hotel was right across from the convention center down yeah. there. And me and you step out. We're like, get on the sidewalk. We're dripping sweat already. Oh, yeah. Branch pulls up next to us. Like, what the fuck are you guys doing walking out in this heat? <laughs> He's like, get the fucking get truck. The truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We did hit up a couple steakhouses while we were there as well. Yes, we did. Oh, man. Let's get into that. Yeah. So that's um, every, it's a big topic. Everybody's wondering about steakhouses. What I think, where we went. Um, so we went to two steakhouses. Uh, we, we got the inside about the first one from a, a lady at the airport. So she overheard us asking a gentleman, and he said, Ruth Chris. And I said, I ain't going to fucking Ruth Chris. Mm-mm. I'm not traveling to down here to Texas and going to one that I can go to back home. Yep. And she overheard us, and she said, J Prime. And we, we're like. J Prime. I remember it was on the list of things when yeah. we were looking things up. Because mm-hmm. we had on our we had Bohannon's for Saturday. That was a plan. Yep. Because online people said Bohannon's steak is fucking, that steakhouse is top notch. And, um. So, but the lady said J Prime. We got in, what, what time was it on uh, Thursday when we got in? Was it like 5.30, like, 6 o'clock? I think it was, was 6 it? o'clock, and we, 6.30 when we got in, mm-hmm. got our stuff, and then we wanted to head over there. And because um, <clears throat> we made reservations for 9, but got there by like 7.30, and we said we were either going to get just drink or just see if we can get a table. Yeah, and they got us a table they right got us, away. They got us a table. Mm-hmm. Um, so, bro, that place. That place fucks. Fucking right it does. J Prime was top fucking notch. Yeah. It was stupid, stupid good. The atmosphere, the service, the food. J Prime was stupid good steakhouse. I eat seafood there. 
Their seafood. Bob ate, Bob doesn't eat seafood. I'm not a seafood guy. Bob's not a seafood guy. Bob, Bob is so fucking picky about his food. It's so it's annoying. I am. I'm you sorry. You don't even eat condiments. I don't. It's weird. Buffalo sauce. That's it. You don't eat, eat. Bob doesn't eat ketchup. Do you know that, Shane? It's ketchup. It's ketchup. You sh- shut your mouth about that. Um, <laughs> shut your mouth when you're talking to me. <laughs> um, but no, J Prime was. Uh, we had a great server. Um, great server. The Mater D knew me. Uh, he, he once I sat down and he was walking around. He can't, and then like realized he, he saw me. and He's like, "Oh, big fan!" Da da da. I was excited. Made me feel really good. And, um, and then we just kept fucking with everybody because we wanted the Wagyu cowboy steak and they didn't have it in stock. Yeah, they're sold out. Mike might have asked them fifty times. So I'll pay double for that. Every single, every single fucking person that walked by that worked there, Mike called him over. Every fucking guy that had water. Servers for other tables. I know you guys have two back there. He said, I know you have them back there. there. (laughs) Everyone. He probably probably asked like eight or nine people. It was a Wagyu tomahawk, right? Yeah, the Cowboys did. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking right. Big one. I think it was something ridiculous, but he really wanted it. And he, Mm -hmm. once it was, once he found out he couldn't have it, he just kept implying that he wanted it. And then, um, uh, so overall, one of my favorite steakhouses I've ever been to. Yeah, me too. One of my favorite, just overall everything. Really good sides. Their sides were some of the best sides I've ever had. Yep. They had that, it was lobster mac and cheese. Was that it? Yeah. Or, bro, that place is. Oh, yeah, the pe- it was penny pasta. Yeah. yeah. Bro, it was stupid good. Then, like, in comparison to what I had at Monterey Bay Fish Grotto. <laughs> all right, let me tell you this. <laughs> Monterey Bay, their seafood mac and cheese for $26 compared to J Prime's mac and cheese was legitimately like letting Emmy cook something and comparing it to an executive chef cooking something. Mm. That's the distance between the two. Yeah. Fuck Monterey Bay again. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> their sides were stupid good. Their Brussels sprouts and, and, the, and the mac and cheese, fucking stupid, stupid good. Mm-hmm. Really rich too. Yeah. Rich, creamy, f- so flavorful. Good drinks. Uh, they knew how to pour Jack and Diet. Thank God. Oh, it was great. We had a couple of shitty Jack and Diets. Yeah. I'll get into Bohannon's here in a minute about it. Yep. But J Prime. Then we kind of got tuned up. Mike was Mike was really tuned up, <laughs> and then Mike went to go to the he went to go to the kitchen. We we always ask. We always ask if we can see the kitchen at every fucking steakhouse we go. People hate it. They fucking hate us. We love it. We love it. <laughs> We're so excited. Can we go in the kitchen? And they're like, oh, let me ask the chef. And I'm like, that's a fucking no. They come back and they're like, we're really busy. I'm like, fuck you. You're not busy. We can go back there. And then, um, and then, I th- and then the chef ended up coming out. Yeah. Chef came out and like, we were so excited. I was stupid excited. And then it turns out his wife is a big fan of mine. Yeah. And, he's and in- he knows, and he's in the fitness and knows who I am. Yeah. Came out, we took a picture with him. I was more excited to meet him because he's running this fucking killer kitchen. Just had a stupid good meal. Oh, yeah. That fucking meal was stupid good. Everything about that place was awesome. That's the place that I take Hannah, mm-hmm. for sure. I want to have fun. Just overall atmosphere, everything about that place. The food, every single course of food. The seafood tower that we got, uh, the steaks. The steaks were good. They weren't the best that I ever had, but they were stupid fucking good. Cooked perfectly. Oh, bro, everything well, about I had the, it. I had the bone-in, I had had the bone-in fillet. fillet. Yeah. yeah, I had the bone-in New York strip. Yep. Yeah. That's your cut, dude. I like I like strips and fillets. Mm-hmm. Stupid good. I loved it. That's I, that's one of my favorite restaurants. It ranks oh, in it ranks cool, in. They had cool rides out front too. Oh yeah, we saw a Lamborghini Urus. Yeah. Yeah, we saw one. Oh, looked, like, shit. looked like Batman. Bro, yeah. it was a like fucking Batman sick car. ride. Yeah. One of the coolest one of the coolest looking rides I've ever seen. I never saw one in person. Me so neither. It's pretty cool. I really liked it. Mm-hmm. I looked looked them up. They start at 200k. Okay, like around 230. Mm-hmm. 230 is like a is a pretty decked out one. Yeah, but but that car is sick. Yeah, if I was I wouldn't get a Lambo car. I'm just I don't like the Lambo car look. It's just I, maybe it's because we live in fucking Pennsylvania. <laughs> fucking fuck that thing all up. We're, oh. like, we're going to take a 22. I can't even drive it home to my house. No, nope. but the SUV can get in and out of my driveway. Can go. I think I might have just like found my found that out of control house car. It's like a house payment <laughs> that maybe one day I'll have. I loved it, bro. Fuck Zach. That's Zach's dream car. Yeah, gonna, Zach's is dream, it? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah it Zach's is. dream car. I'm gonna buy it before him. Just be a dick. <laughs> Zach, would you like to take a Would you like to take a ride in my car? Your dream ride. <laughs> He'll Zach, be so Zach might walk out that day. He's going to be so pissed <laughs> he off. He might quit. <laughs> or he's going to fucking smash sales so he can get something better than you. 
<laughs> Just don't have any kids, Zach, and don't buy a house. Buy the buy the Lambo Urus. Bro, it was a cool car. You wanted uh, to tow him twice. Um, <laughs> Um, 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 I, I understand the sports car thing. I get it. It's really cool. Fucking sports cars are cool. They do make you feel wild when you drive a sports car and go fast and all that. And I, and I get it because I, I equate it to how I felt when I bought my truck and how I still feel driving that thing. Yeah. Like last night driving home, driving it fast. I was like, I fucking love my truck. That thing rips. It's so much fun. I love my truck. I love it. And seeing that there. And how about how about how we were like, can we see inside? We asked the fucking valet if we could see inside, and the lady's like, yeah. And I'm like, you're gonna let us look in this fucking car? And she's like, he's a regular here. He's gonna be excited. Yeah, that like you guys she, are she into was gonna it. tell him that like, hey, I showed it to these group of guys. Yeah, and then yeah. she did, and he was all fucking pumped up. Yep. He's like, she was. He, she said he was so excited that people were appreciating it, and it's pretty cool because again, that's that's a big accomplishment sure. to be able to have that, and you want to, <clears throat> you know, you like that. It's like having big biceps. Look at my biceps. Everybody's like, oh, that's great. That must be hard to get. I'm like, fucking is. Then they appreciate them. Then they want to touch, and then that's too far. Yep. Get the fuck off me. You're, you're, get off of those. Don't touch them. If you're a woman, please don't touch me. If you're a man, definitely don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> how, would you, uh, how would you compare the steakhouse to Steak 48? Because that was one of your top ones, too. All right, Shane. Another thing that we kind of like determine out of this trip is that there's different categories so it's like you're not comparing them to each right. other you're just setting them like so i'll, I'll answer that in a question yeah. bohannon's bohannon's steaks were some of the best steaks i've ever eaten in my fucking life yep i ate a bone in new york strip again a dry aged 45 years it had 45 a f- days right? 45 days why do i keep saying that i don't know my mind's not working right it's i okay. need more coffee <laughs> no um <laughs> please no <laughs> Um, that had that funky taste to it. You could taste the fucking, you could taste the, the nutty, blue cheesy fungus next to the bone. Up against that bone was wild. Oh, man, it was so, I, that is my shit. I love a dry aged steak. Well, well, we'll get to comparing those. Let's, let's start from the beginning with Bohannon's and explain it. Okay, just old school as fuck. Yeah, really old school. Really old school, really classic, um, like... Older crowd, very, it's a little, it, it, I would say it's comparable in price, but the steaks were a little bit more expensive there because they were very high-end steaks. They had crazy Wagyu steaks. They had Wagyu, um, they had a couple different types of Wagyu. The one, uh, why am I, can't even remember it. It's a weird Asian name. Weird That's Asian why. name, and they were like $140 steaks. Yeah. They had, two, they had three of them. Uh, one was a, a filet, a ribeye, and then a strip. Um, and they were, Pat got... The strip. Pat got the strip, bro. It was a wild taste. They brought them all out on a big platter, like raw, so we could check them out, yeah. see them and stuff. Mm-hmm. The the marbling on these uh, Japanese wagyu, wild looking, wild look, like spidered with white, like white fat and swirls. And I never tasted anything like it. Mm-hmm. Their steaks were some of the best steaks I've ever eaten. Their service mediocre. Felt like they were a little understaffed. Their bar. Kind of sucked. I felt like I was drinking Diet Coke with a little bit of Jack in it. Um, their sides were mediocre at very best, uh, but their steaks fucked. Yeah. Like, bro, Jeff Ruby's is my favorite steak that I've ever eaten. Bohannon's is number two. Their steaks were number two. The experience overall, am I ever going back? The only thing taking me back to Bohannon's is the steak. If I want to go have a good time, take my friends out, or if I'm recommending anywhere to go out and have a good time, J Prime in, in Texas. It's not going to be Bohannon's. If you are a steak person, if you are someone who just like loves steak, go there, have a couple drinks, get a steak, and get a dessert. That's it. Don't expect to have the server over the top. And it was just at J Prime and at Eddie V's and Jeff Ruby's and Steak Forty Eight. Different atmosphere, upbeat, like really, really fun. J uh, Bohannon's was just it was a classic spot. Very Peter Luger-esque, but except Peter Luger's is scary. Bunch of Middle Eastern fucking guys that are or, uh, uh, Eastern European. No, okay, Peter Luger's. There was not. There is not one female server at Peter Luger's. Hmm. Not one. All of them were. All servers were male, over the age of forty-five, and Eastern European. Okay, it was a little terrifying. You, and they don't fucking. They don't say much. No. 
Mike asked about the lobster. He said, "This is a steakhouse." <laughs> <laughs> he asked about a, he asked about food on a menu and said this is a steakhouse. Mike's like, okay, fuck me, get the steak, and he's like, steak for four because there was four of us, and we're like, yeah, steak for four. <laughs> so we got bacon. They had these slabs of bacon, yeah. okay, pork belly, and then uh, and then we do, and then we got steak for four. Yeah, we so, didn't get anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. Oh, and their Jack and Diets were heavy fucking pours. They were they were home pours. Okay. Shane drank one and was shit faced. I believe it. I had like four. I started saying inappropriate shit. Yep. It was great. Then we to, went. Then we went to a gay bar after that. <laughs> that was not my idea, for the record. <laughs> this is great. This is going to be so fun. <laughs> the gay bar. So after we went to Peter Luger's, got all tuned up. Their steaks were stupid fucking good. Peter Luger's is a wild spot. Um, not my favorite. Not my favorite environment. Yeah. But the steaks are definitely unique. And if you're a steak guy, gotta go to experience it. We get back and we're all kind of tuned up and uh, we went up to New York for the uh, natural body event. Yeah. And uh, we got back and the the hotel bar wasn't open. And Mike's like, hey, is there a bar nearby? And he's like, yeah, bar right over there. We're like, fuck it, let's go. So four of us, four guys, we're walking down the road. It's like maybe half a block away. Mm -hmm. We walk in, and it's a dive bar. I'm like, oh, it's a dive bar. Paying no attention to anything. Mm -hmm. Walk up, get four Jack and Diets, okay? These were the worst Jack and Diets I've ever tasted in my life. They were in them <laughs> shitty fucking see-through plastic cups. Mm. Like you'd get it like fucking nickel night out yeah. of the fucking shit bar. Yep. Bro, get there. And I take one drink, and I fucking put it back down. I'm like... I ain't drinking now. I'm done. I'm going to go to bed here in a minute. Fuck this place. Just, it was a dive bar. I, I like my dive bars here. Mm -hmm. So then, all of a sudden, like, this dude w comes over and sits right in front of Pat at the bar. And I'm like, man, that was a fucking weird move. I'm like, what the fuck is that? That's weird. And then, all of a sudden, I look around. I look to my right. I look to my left. And I look back at Pat. And Pat looks at me and he goes. You're shaking I, your head. I shook my head, yes. <laughs> I shook my head, yes. And I go, this is a gay bar. And Pat goes, yes, it is. We look at Shane because we always fuck with Shane about being gay. <laughs> and Shane goes, I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> that was the first one out of the He door. walked right out. Mike's like questioning if he should finish his drinks. He's, he took two of them. And he's like, uh. <laughs> like everybody, I'm like, get me the fuck out of here. This is. <laughs> like oh, like all this awkwardness all of a sudden came over, and I'm like, yep, this is a gay bar. I need to get out of here before I get fucking – can I go to the bathroom before I leave? <laughs> <laughs> so so the dude at the hotel, he knew this, right? Yeah, bro. It, yeah, it screams gay bar when you walk in. Yeah, we so just were just completely oblivious to it yeah, all. He set you guys up. I think he did. Yeah, yeah it was a good sure. It was a good move, but like the fact that we bust Shane's balls about that all the time. Or he thought all four of you were, were gay. We're going to have a great time. <laughs> so. thought, yeah, we definitely didn't want to walk in there and say, we're here for the gangbang. <laughs> how, how we always enter a room. Exactly. <laughs> Thank God. Oh, man, it was a riot. Absolute fucking riot. So needless to say, we did leave. Uh, and now we have an awesome story mm -hmm. about the time we went to a gay bar, and we always say it was Shane's idea. And <laughs> Shane, but like the, how how we saw it, like I looked to my right, I looked at my left, I looked at Pat, and both both nodding our heads. Guys like made eye contact. We, we were like, mm -hmm. "Yep, this is a gay bar." <laughs> <laughs> uh, my <laughs> my dad did work for uh, did work. He does kitchens and bathrooms. Yeah. And uh, back in the day, he used to do he used to do bars. Things like that. A lot of custom work. You know, just woodworkers, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's gay bars down in Pittsburgh. And this is back in the day. I think it's called the Pegasus. I think that was a gay bar. What well, was like, there was a tiered bar. Like, there was gay bar. There was a regular bar on one floor, then a gay bar, lesbian bar, all this. And my dad went to the grand opening. My dad don't mind gay people. Mm -hmm. He's like, everybody's money green. He's like, I'll take everybody's money. I don't give a fuck. You need a job done? Sure. You want to pay cash? I'll take your cash, too. Please pay cash. I like that. <laughs> My dad, cash is king, <laughs> you know. So uh, he did this. And this is whenever they were younger. We were little kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my dad also likes to party, likes to, likes to have a couple drinks, smoke a doobie, always enjoyed himself. Dude works so hard. He Work hard, play hard. Where do you think I fucking get it from? Mm -hmm. So he goes and uh, they go to the grand opening of this. And again, my dad don't give a fuck. 
excuse me, don't care. They go to this, they go, they're having a great time. You know, the owner introducing them everywhere, this guy that built the bars, all this shit, great, wonderful. And then um, they're hanging out at the gay bar and um, having a drink there. And all of a sudden, dude walks over to my dad's talking to him and then gives him a hard slap and grab on his ass. And he looked over at my mom with the wide eyes and he goes, we're fucking leaving. <laughs> and my mom's like, my mom's like, what do you mean, Greg? We're having a great time. And he's like, let's get out of here. I can't handle this shit. <laughs> so everything was cool until you got your ass grabbed, huh, Dad? Yep. Got the hell out of there. <laughs> he's like, I got the fuck out of there. <laughs> oh, man. Fucking right. I was like, I, those are oh, I could see your dad, dude. <laughs> a young, young Greg Ferrosi with jet black hair, also oh. all back, you know, the, you know, fucking short Italian. Yep. Just such a... Yep, yep. Oh, it was. My mom said it was a fucking riot. I'm gonna grab his ass next time I see him. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Just so you know, if that would have happened to me at that bar in New York, I wouldn't have told you guys. <laughs> yeah, we won't let you live that one down. You never lived it down. <laughs> oh, so, so you're saying it might have happened? So you're saying it might have happened? That's, yeah. That was his way of telling us. <laughs> He's like, I got that. I gotta get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Love that ass. Oh, man. Good times. Mm -hmm. Good times. We, uh, or so, like, he did this crazy custom job. Again, big custom guy back in the day. Uh, he switched from doing custom to much more uh, uh, simpler installs during the recession because in 08, 09, when the recession hit, small business just got fucking hammered. And uh, that's whenever he made the transition out because he's like, I got to change the way I do business. Custom work isn't worth it to me. I got people to employ. I got to make sure I got to find a way to keep, continue to make the money to make sure everybody's okay. And um, doesn't do full custom. <clears throat> Still do a bunch of installs, remodels, custom remodel stuff, but use a lot more. They don't do custom cabinetry from scratch. Yeah. They order them in, install them custom tops they do do custom tops all that stuff still but yeah and um there's just so many fucking stories because he's in you, when you or you go inside people's houses like your dad yeah you go inside people's houses you learn more about them you learn their demeanors you learn how they live and if you're remodeling someone's kitchen the kitchen is the centerpiece of a house mm -hmm. so it's a big fucking deal and kitchens ain't cheap kitchen can be anywhere from 25 to a hundred thousand dollars you know what I mean? If people are spending that, they're going to be meticulous and all that. But my dad's always, he always treats it like it's his own home and yeah. does a stellar job. And I'll never forget when, it, again, he did work for, it was I'm just talking about the gay gays. And he's like, he did work for a gay couple and they're there. And, um, uh, and they were like, we really appreciate you doing this work, Greg. And he's like, yeah, what, what do you, what do you mean? <laughs> and they're like, well, we had a couple contractors in here that didn't want to do work because we were gay. He's like, fuck out of here. He's like, I'll take all your money. I don't care if it's gay or not. <laughs> like, he just says inappropriate shit. And he's like, they, they, and he makes him feel good because he's a good dude. And it's sure. just, it's so funny hearing stories like that because my dad has just held himself to a standard to make sure he treats people with respect and gives them something so that they can be excited. Mm -hmm. They can be happy about this and spending time in something that he created. I mean, I guess that's one of the reasons that I am the way I am. Yeah. Even though he's profane and fucked up and says inappropriate things. Bro, it just it just comes back to just stop fucking taking things so damn serious all the time. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like you don't have to. No, and 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 my dad don't have a bad bad thing in his heart. No. He's just a good dude. No, he take the shirt off his back for someone. He just wants to make money for his family, be able to retire, do his thing. Crack a couple fucked up jokes. Oh, he definitely. At the worst bro. times possible. <laughs> and get everyone rolling. <laughs> fucking. I mean, that is, it's so wrong, the shit he has said. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but he just did it for a rise at everybody. Like, if we we're somewhere and it's boring, oh, man, my dad's going to be like, oh, watch this. I'm fucking with everybody. Can you see it, can you see it like about to happen? You're like, yes. here we go. How do you? That's how I am. Your mom's probably like, "Here we go." Greg. Oh yeah, she just sits there and goes, "Oh, you fucking asshole!" She like this, like, uh, oh, oh yeah. Because well, I'm going in the other room. Because the whole time he's just doing it to see the reactions of people. Because it, the party sucks. Yep. Whenever you're somewhere and you know it's boring, you're like, "Oh man!" And then all of a sudden, fucking Greg comes in, starting to just say inappropriate shit, telling a story about the kids doing something or just making fun of himself or anything, and people lighten up and have a great time. Dude's a riot. <laughs> oh, man. 
He's a fucking, he's a hoot, dude. He's having his hip replaced today. Yeah, you were telling me. Yeah, today's the surgery Number day. two, right? Number two. Yeah. Yep. Number two. Number two. He's saying, hey, can I have more growth hormone? <laughs> <laughs> no, Dad, you're not allowed to take more growth hormone. <laughs> but it's going to heal more. No, Dad, no. it won't. Shut the fuck up. Stay in bed. Do the, re- do the rehab. Yeah. That's it. Man, hips are nuts. Hips are, I, hips are Easier than knees, though, right? Yeah, they're easier recovery. Yeah, I mean, I it's still shit. You watch that fucking video of people getting their hips replaced. They split their shit open, cut their. Oh, shit I out. won't watch. I won't watch that shit. No, it's scary. Mm-mm. They okay. hammer it out of the fucking joint. Yeah, dude, they're in there with a fucking like a little like a mallet. I could do that. No way. No way. Ooh. I can't even watch those like gym fail. Videos. No way. No way. I can't watch those gym fail. Slice that up. You're out of your mind. Nope. Yeah, your mind. You know, that's the thing I love about my dad. He's just a good dude. Mm-hmm. I can't wait. Once he retires, I'm going to fuck with him a ton. Yeah. He, actually, I might not, so he doesn't show up here every day. He'll retire and just be like, hey, I'm coming down. I got <laughs> I got this. We're going to put it up, and we're I'm going to build. Uh, uh, maybe I could just do some. I'll just clean up everything. I'll just make sure everything's cleaned up and look good. Oh, jeez, oh, stay out of here. Ten minutes later, he puts you to work. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, load up that cardboard. You got to get it out of here. Break up that... Fu- Who didn't break up that fucking cardboard? You better break those down before they go in there. <laughs> <laughs> fucking dudes are rot. <laughs> Jesus. I saw it full, full circle when we had all of our AR inventory uh, above his shop. Oh, yeah. And just the whole procedures and... Oh, yeah. Like He, he was really cool about everything. I tell you what, for the... For the shit we put him through? <laughs> I was thinking about that. Like, he gave us some shit for some things, but, like, bro, we loaded his fucking... Oh, yeah, we fucked with it pretty good. And convinced the fuck out of it. Oh, yeah, it was great. I love it. Oh, man. And that wasn't long ago. No, it wasn't. You know, and, and I guess we'll transition into a little current events. Uh, yesterday... Uh, whenever we were at the event, found out that Kobe Bryant died. Yeah. Man, that is a wild, wild, wild thing. It was really heavy. I uh, I, I didn't bring it up. I found out before you because you were just talking with so many people. And, like, I almost didn't want to bring it up because it gave me such a heavy fucking feeling that. Bro, that's exactly what we talk about every day. Yeah. I think about that every day. Mm-hmm. That's what changed how I look at life was the possibilities of passing early Mm -hmm. and kobe bryant like it wasn't just him it was his 13 year old daughter it was another mom and dad and their daughter and then a few other people yeah bro they all died in a freak helicopter accident yeah so right there everything that we preach about being a hard-working motherfucker and appreciating life i know i'm gonna die one day dude I know I'm going to die early. That's why I appreciate every fucking second of my life. That's why I say, dude, I don't got problems. We don't have problems. We just have more work to do. Bro, that wife and his other children now have a fucking problem. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they have millions of dollars, right? They got fucking hundreds of millions of dollars, and everybody wishes they had hundreds of millions of dollars. How much do you want to bet that mom, those kids... Would go flat, fucking broke. Take all my money to give them back. Yeah. Give me back my husband. Give me back my daughter. All of it. I'll go flat broke. Just give me them back. All their fortune, everything that they have, I just want them back. That's the real shit that we talk about every fucking day. About being a hardworking motherfucker. And the fact that you don't have problems, you just have work to do. Now they have a fucking problem. Mm -hmm. If I equate that to Adeline and I dying in a freak accident, he's 41, 13 year old, I'm 35 with a 12 year old. If I and Adeline pass, I don't think everybody's cool in my family. Mm. I don't think everybody's cool. I got a baby on the way. I got a five-year-old at home, and I got a fucking fiancé that loves me that's just starting her life, adult life, to have an absolute beautiful time. Mm -hmm. Guarantee you every penny that I have in the bank account and every penny that my companies are worth, all they would want is me. Yep. You don't have problems, just more work to do. The passing of someone young is astronomical. Her passing at 13 years old is even more tragic 
simply because she don't get to experience the life that you all do. She doesn't get to feel the love of another human being. She doesn't get to feel the love of the 16-year-old first-time love. She doesn't get to go to prom. And whether it be a good time or a bad time or a bad experience that you had at prom or a great one, she doesn't even get to fucking experience it. She doesn't get to feel what it's like to get married. She's not going to feel what it's like to have a child. She's not going to feel what it likes to have life. And here you are bitching about Monday morning work. No, dude. I'm not going to be here forever. I'm not. Taking all the steroids that I did and abusing my body the way I did, I know that if I had a life expectancy from the time I was born, that God said, motherfucker, you got 80 years. I know what I did to myself knocked a significant number off. I know that. I have to accept that now. I can't change that because I like the position I'm in. I worked and did those things to put myself in the position I'm in right now, and I love it. So if I only have, or if anyone out there only has, 15 or 20 summers left, I'm 35 years old. Let's say I have 65 years total. That means I only got 30 more Christmases. I got 30 more summers. I got 30 more fall fests in western Pennsylvania to look at the leaves. I got 30 more fucking years. I better enjoy every single one of them. Something tragic like this at such a mass scale is good that people are starting to feel it. It is fucking horrendous that people actually have to go through something like this to realize these. But, dude, I'm telling everyone right now, you better look at this every single day like this. Mm -hmm. Every single motherfucking day. I think about it every day because I know what I did to myself. And I remind myself constantly because... I need to remind myself constantly so I remember how important my children are. Like I said, being a hardworking motherfucker. Don't be some one-dimensional fuck. Don't be good at one thing. Be good at everything you do. Because if you're a one-dimensional son of a bitch, that means that if that one dimension of you is taken away, you have nothing fucking left. You're going to be a dad? Go be a fucking dad. Be the best motherfucker you can be. You're going to go be the husband, you go be the best motherfucking husband you can be. Go be an employee, go be the best employee you can be. You a business owner, be the best business owner employee, you, or best employer you can be. Be the best that you can be at every single fucking thing that you do. Because you might not get again. You can't come back. Look at life that way. It's crazy because people ask me, how are you so positive, Seth? I, I mean, I thought about it because we did that huge seminar over the weekend. Why am I so positive? I told people about it. Because I know I'm numbered, dude. This is fucking real. This ain't a joke. Bad shit happens, freak things happen, and then life happens. My question to you is, is why the fuck are you so negative then? Fuck is wrong with your life. You got a problem? Solve it. Go to work. Do the work. Kids are happy and healthy. Your abled body. Two hands, two feet. You got a brain. Abled bodied. Go to work. You don't have problems. Just more work to do. Why are you so negative? No, stop asking me why I'm so positive. I love my life, dude. Yeah. Love it. Don't be negative. Go enjoy it. That's where it comes in, dude. You are working. If you have the ability to do great things because of the financial situation you're in or save your money and be fiscally responsible to do fun things with the people in your life, save your money for the vacation, save your money for the vehicle, save your money for the fucking dream home, save your money for the things you want in life so that you can enjoy life. Because I know that I do not want to be on my deathbed and not fuck under a waterfall. <laughs> I don't want to be on my deathbed and say woulda, coulda, shoulda. I'm going to enjoy it. That's one of the things I love about steakhouses. That's one of the things I love about fucking bourbon. It's one of the things that I love about meeting so many different people from so many different walks of life. I get to learn about them and their passions in life. This is fucking beautiful to be here. And if anybody feels any different, I don't want nothing to fucking do with you. Because that dude passing like that 
and having a young 13-year-old girl, another family in there, bro, ain't nobody the same. Mm -mm. If my child died, that might be the one thing that would actually fucking crumble me and beat me. I would be devastated. I don't know how the fuck I'd get through the days. Mm -mm. I don't know. So whenever I see people that are in those positions, that's what I, I just put myself there. I just remove myself from where I'm at, put myself there and say, fuck this, dude. Let's go to work. Oh, I got 10 hours of fucking digging holes. Guess what the fuck I'm doing? I'm going to put the fucking tunes on, get some Gatorade. I'm going to dig motherfucking holes today. Let's go. Yep. It is unreal. And the fact that, and, and I mean, it's good that people are realizing how important life is. And it sucks so fucking bad. That something tragic like this has to had had occurred, especially to somebody like him. Well, he I, I was saying me like I, I really felt it when I read that. Like, and, and Mike said the same thing. He's like, you know, we, we see celebrities, people we, we don't know, pass away all this stuff, and yeah, you, you take a moment and you you think about it, and then you move on. But something about Kobe passing, and I think you know, since he's retired, he has been so involved with the game, his family improving his his daughter's craft because she was so passionate about basketball like he is so i I think people have been feeling him the last what five years he's been retired or so yeah like fuck dude that the dude he was the best basketball player he could be and his time came to be the best father that he could be so while this was so heartbreaking and, and can't even put words to it i think that man had more pride in the last five years that he would be able to be there with his daughter and and yeah just that she got a glimpse and felt it with him for, for a few years and you saw you, know? it. you saw them oh, together yeah. like any dad knows that any person can see that who, who was he at the laker games with his fucking daughter his daughter and and here's the crazy thing like you were saying bro nah, it's fucking me up yeah. Because you, it, it, I'll, I'll say this, people in life pass, but why is it so profound that Kobe passed? Mm-hmm. Why is everybody like kind of fucked up from this? Mm-hmm. And and there was there was somebody that made a comment like, what about everybody else, the troops and other people that die that aren't celebrities? Here's the gig, dude. I support everybody and anybody that I respect personally. I'm always going to respect them and mm-hmm. show respect to them. Bro, for me to get to live this life doing what I do is because of where I live. Mm-hmm. The men and women that have sacrificed for this to occur, that's why I work so hard. I work so hard because people lay their life on the line for me to do this. And I believe that's one of the reasons that he worked hard. Because he has a mentality like many competitors and savage people, entrepreneurs, hardcore people. Okay, he has the mentality that I'm going to be the best person I can be because of the opportunity that I'm given. Yeah. Bro, he was one of the, my favorite. He was my favorite basketball player. Yeah. My favorite basketball player. Hani is the one who schooled me because Hani is a huge Kobe fan. Mm-hmm. So Hani schooled me about who he is, his the Mamba mentality, all that stuff, and his and and who he was. Bro, that mentality. He just wanted you to be the best person you could be, the best version of yourself. And whatever you're doing. Be one savage motherfucker. Didn't matter where you came from, who you were, anything. That mindset is the mindset of many successful people. He just had his version of it. Yep. It's like the hardworking motherfucker for me. It's my mentality. It's how I think. It's how I operate. I use the blue-collar workforce in the environment I grew up in with him. And he was he, that was him, the mama mentality. Like he was going to give it his all. There was never going to be an excuse. He had, there was no excuses. Just an absolute fucking savage. He changed millions of people. Their mentality with millions. He wasn't just a a basketball player and an entertainer. He changed how people looked at life. He inspired so many athletes to be better versions of themselves. Now, not every athlete's a great person, but he inspired them to be the best that they could be at something. Mm-hmm. And if that pulls someone out of a really shit situation and puts them in a better situation, it's all you can ask for out of life. And him doing that and changing so many, it's pretty fucking incredible. Oh, yeah. So, and that is what, and that's what, um, I think that's what fucked with 
the most everyone. Yeah. The fact that somebody that gave their all. Man, if you, I mean, because I give my all at everything. You give your all. Look, Shane's given his all. Everybody at our company gives all that they have to what we're building. That's why it's all working. That guy did that on his level. And look, at all the NBA players, bro, there was a lot of NBA players that were fucked up. Like, he's their hero. Oh, yeah. Like, they were crying on the fucking floor. Yep. Bro, that's crazy. Because, like, grown men crying because that dude impacted them so much that they were the best person they could be because of one person. Yep. It's a yeah. big it's a big deal. Baker Mayfield posted that big thing about him. His number one idol in life, Kobe Bryant. Yep. Bro, and 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 it's tough, uh, you know, and I understand where people come from, but whenever you have someone that has influenced some so many people in such a positive way, it's a big deal. It's a huge deal. It's a big deal. There's not many individuals like that. And not only that, but then people bringing up old, bringing up old shit or anything they could to tear them down in bad shit. It's like, dude, that. then it goes back to the resort of uh, everybody's looking for the perfect person. Mm-hmm. Look at me, dude. I am a fucking mess. You know what I mean? You look at you. You fucked up a lot, too. Yep. Everybody has. And the last, the last thing that anybody should bring up is old shit about him when he fucking passed. Yeah. I saw a lot of it on the internet. Saw fucking even news. CNN said something fucked up about him. And I'm just like, God damn, dude. Fucking people in negativity. Pull the good. You better pull the good. And it's terrible, like I said, that like, it, it, like the, the good that's coming from this is everybody better love their kids a little more. That's the problem. People are attracted to negativity because it's so fucking, it's everywhere. Oh. You get attracted to it. Like, stop the shit, dude. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I want the, I want the good shit. You know what I mean? And 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 it's this is the where my head goes. It's so fucked up. But like I even say, like, dude, whenever I, I tell people, slap your old lady on the ass. Yeah. You know, slap your old lady on the ass. Tell her you love her. Make sure she knows the things that the little things that Hannah do to let her let me know that she loves me and all that. Bro, him and his wife ain't gonna share that ever again. They don't get to have that no more. How I wake Emmy up in the morning. How I wake Adeline up in the morning. How Hannah wakes them up in the morning. Like all the little things. You don't get to experience that again. All those little things are impactful. I remember how my mom used to wake me up in the morning. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like th- those things won't occur in that family anymore. Same thing goes for anybody that passes. That's why you have to appreciate life. That's why you have to be, be, be appreciative of the life that you have. And if you don't like the situation you're in or if you're upset because you don't make enough money or if you're upset because the person in your life is a bag of shit and you can't wait to get away from them or the significant other is a fucking asshole and you're an abusive place or whatever it may be, bro, get the fuck out of it. You'll be good. You'll be better. I ate shit for a long time to become better. Do that, people. Do that. Because there's nothing worse than living a life of misery and not being the best you can be. Because like I said, dude, I do say that dude's worth half a billion fucking dollars with all the shit he had going on behind closed, door, behind closed doors in business and nobody really knew about. Half a billion dollars. His wife would give fucking anything to have it back. They'd go back. They'd go, she'd be like, yeah, I'll live on the streets for a fucking full year with my family just to have him back. It's crazy, dude. Yeah. It's crazy. Same thing goes for every family. They're like, there's no amount of money that, 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 that can bring them back, but I would do anything. Sell your soul to the devil. Bring them back. You know? Yep. You're like, I'll live an eternity of fucking misery with the devil just so I can spend my time that I have on, on, on this planet with them. That's why, that's, bro, that's a big part of why I am the way I am. Because... <sighs> I just, I, I just, I know what I did to myself, and I can't lie about it or pretend it didn't exist. So, crazy, crazy. Yeah, every day. Oh yeah, man. I, and 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 like I said, I just hope that everybody starts pulling good. I want people to pull more out of their own life. It's like I said, give her a good slap. <laughs> <laughs> we should do a whiteboard on how to slap your old lady yeah, in the, on the ass. We were talking about that this weekend, Shane. We're gonna do a whiteboard tutorial, slapping the. Slap the lady on the how, how do you slap the old lady on the ass? Do a tutorial. How do you do it from the top, the bottom, what they mean, the direction they're going? So you're going to be the woman. Oh, no. <laughs> nope. I'll film it. I'm not, I'm not going to be a part you're of not, this. You're not, 
<laughs> no way. No, Shane, we have to use we have to use you. Yes. Have to. Yeah. We can't actually slap a woman's ass on camera and do yeah. that. And that's degrading. We can get a doll or something. <sighs> nope. I just gotta let you know how I feel, I'm Shane. Be, uh, I'm gonna be unavailable that day. I'm gonna be sick. Shane's like, I got 27 vacation yeah. days that you guys never let me take, so I'm going to take one of them. We'll go to his house and be like, all right, we're here to film the video. He won't even be there. He'll be out of the state. He'll be gone. Shane's we like, will not find him. This is fucking horrible. You guys are such assholes. Well, we'll bring Jay in. Yep. That's fine. Hey, did you see Jay, Jay got engaged? Jay yeah. is engaged. Yeah. Congrats, I'll, guys. Yeah. Congrats, Jay and Megan. All right. Jay's moving here, too. Yes, he is. He's, fucking right. He's moving out to Western PA. It's exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll get so much more done with him here. Yeah. It'll be great. Yep. Yep. Fuck yeah. Just gotta, he has to get a truck, though. Yeah. It's like Shane. Shane said he's going to trade in the car and get a truck soon. Yeah. Yeah. I heard that. Yep. Like tomorrow. I heard that. Man, you guys are full of shit today. <laughs> You're, You're making full, everything up. You're full of shit. So after this is over, we're gonna like we're gonna like take him to the dealership right up the road. And he'll be like, "Hey, we're gonna trade this in. We need a truck." And he's like, "Stop it, guys! I'm not trading it in. Fuck him! Don't listen to him. This is how this is gonna this is go." What he wants? He wants the dually. He wants the dually. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make him buy an orange dually. Ah. <laughs> uh. You get so much ass with that, Shane. Absolutely. Your woman would love it. I don't she, know if she likes trucks. I never asked her. She listens to these, so maybe she'll tell me if she likes trucks or not. I'm going to go ahead and say she likes trucks, she Shane. She likes trucks, Shane. We're going to find there's out. Nothing better, there's nothing better really? than being able to throw a blanket in the bed of a truck and have your way with your woman under the stars. That's my shit. How old are you? That's like a, such a boomer, like, nostalgic thing. That's fucking high school, brother. That's like, oh, look at this. Maybe I'll be under the stars. I'll lay with this girl. It's a cowboy thing. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. What a ranch hand. Yep. Come on. Get with it. I'm pretty much a cowboy now. I love it. You are. I got fully outfitted while I was in Texas. You did. Yep. I'm. I'm. I'm this. just borderline jealous that I don't look as good in a cowboy hat as you. Here, I'm gonna try it on. I Let's won't be see. able to hear much, or nope. I'll hear you, not me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Showing the goods. We walk through. Take the, it all in. Yep. We walk through the entire airports, all the airports. No one. I got any, any airport we went to. No one questioned your cowboy hat. Nope. I led the way, like no. So I was like looking at people, waiting to look at you. See, nope. One hundred percent on. All it in. suits you. Yep. I mean, you do own a big farm. You do drive a tractor. It was meant to be. It was. All right. I can't hear myself. I don't all like right. this. You got to get back in, huh? Yep. Yeah, the headphones make a big difference. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Maybe we should get custom headphones that go, like, somewhere around the cowboy hat. So you can wear the cowboy hat. Yeah. Get on yeah, that, Shane. Get yep. There's, um, there's got to be some kind of set we can do with the hat. Fantastic. Yeah. Because I just feel right with it on. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, we went to, I love cowboy boots. We went to, I like, what, Cavenders. Is that what it was called? Yeah. Yeah, like, kind of like the spice. Kind of like the spice. Greek seasoning, but. I don't know, maybe, I gotta, I'm going to have to look at the, the label there. Is it in that hat? I think that's what it was. That was in, was that in Victoria? Yeah. No, it was definitely Cavenders, yeah. Yeah, was it in Victoria or was that in? It was in Victoria. Yeah, we stopped mm -hmm. there. No, it was Sex Store. Had a great time. Fucking thousands of boots. Love thousands it. of hats. I like cowboy boots because I like using them instead of dress shoes. I fucking hate dress shoes. I got my cowboy boots on too. I know, I saw. Should I whip them out? Sure. I'm going to whip them out. Yeah, sure, everybody. Shane wants a pair. Fuck yeah. <sighs> Brand new. Ariat cowboy boots are sick. Got the one with the heel in case I start riding. The riding heel. Yep. Yep. No, I love cowboy boots because I hate dress shoes. I like wearing a jacket and jeans. When I get dressed up, I just like having a nice custom jacket. Yep. Pair of jeans, cowboy boots, nice belt. It's my shit. Belt buckle. Yep. You can get one. Uh, they were. They didn't suit me. They didn't have my initial. I wanted to get one with an F, so I'm going to look for one that has that. because F I like for fuck. S F for fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that there's an F on my dad, on my parents' house in the railing? Uh, on the yeah, railing, there's yeah. an F in it. And uh, in the beginning, it's obviously for Ferozzi, but uh, people drive around, they're like, oh, nice, nice railing F. And he's like, F's for fertile. Because <laughs> he had five kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fucking asshole. There he is, Greg. Fertile Ferozzi's. Fertile Ferozzi's. 
Oh, man. Yeah, but love the cowboy hat. Thank you. Really good time. You know what? I will say this. Well, let's talk about snacks for a minute. We'll go back to some food here. Okay. Um, you know what I noticed in Texas? Hmm. Bro, there was no pretzels at the gas stations. No. I saw no pretzels. No pretzels. No, they just had like the cheapy no-name they had, brands. They had like one type of pretzel, but they didn't have like six like up here. Yeah. Like usually you have your cho- choice between hers and Utz and then like Snyder. Like you've got multiple choices. Nope. There you had like one and they were just the mini ones with like a little bit of salt. And I like the salty ones. Yeah, I don't like those. Yeah, no. Fuck also, it. no pretzels on the on Delta. Yeah. Th- what was that? I don't know. They're like, oh, I think American's the only airline that carries pretzels now. What the fuck does that mean? Fuck off. Give me some. All the fucking weird allergies and nut. nut, I mean, I have a nut allergy. All the shit. And then you're just not going to have pretzels on a plane. Well, you have gluten. Gluten free. Fuck. Can't have pretzels. Notice those Cheez-Its were multi-grain. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't taste the same. Fucking vegans. (sighs) Motherfuckers. I'm just going to blame them, even though it's not their fault. You know what we have right here under the table? Snacks. Mm. Oh, I thought you were setting me up for something here. Oh, no, there's nothing under the table for you other than snacks, not my dick or anything. I, no. like, I already got that out of the way a couple times. Gotcha. Last night, I was a horrible mess. Yep. I was like 35 bun jump. Yep. <laughs> this morning, I laid the law down. Yeah, I, I did too. I had to. Man. Had to get it out. Two sweet lovins. I was walking through Texas with a Hold loaded on. gun. I'm surprised I didn't get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a license to carry down there. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, but we have snacks. So uh, we told everybody how we felt about Pop-Tart. Yeah. I have the limited edition Pop-Tarts right here. Like which? New limited edition Pop-Tarts. They oh. are the pretzel Pop-Tarts. We have. We got a ton of messages. I'm going to say we had like a hundred and some messages about these new Pop-Tarts. If everybody that doesn't know, I fucking hate limited edition Pop-Tarts. They suck. I love regular Pop-Tarts. I think they're tremendous. But limited edition Pop-Tart has never nailed a limited edition Pop-Tart. They all suck. We had the Fruit Loops one on the other day. Fucking Sucks. awful. God awful. Anybody that says they're good, you must like cleaning products. Hmm. They're just terrible. Bind they salt. tasted like Fruit Loops for a second, and then it's just overbearing, like, just horrible flavoring. You could taste it. Um, but, like I said, I like Pop-Tarts, regular ones. I like strawberries and cherries, my favorite. Strawberry ones, cherry ones. Um, Emmy loves the hot fudge sundae. Those are regular Pop-Tarts. Yeah. Limited edition stuff. I am, I'm always pulling for them because I think there's going to be one, and then I'll be right Listen, at one time. I'm hoping. These are, we'll read the name. These are Pop-Tarts. They're the pretzel and then chocolate. So they apparently they're like a, maybe like a Nutella flavor, but like a, a pretzel outside. Um, I got them at Walmart. They, Walmart always has the new stuff. Uh, they usually have one or two. There's oh usually... Yeah, yeah. Walmart's unique. Shane, so, you trying it? All right. So these are the pretzel Pop-Tarts, um, brand new. Should I toss them a pack here? Yeah, go ahead. Let's take a look. Look at that catch. He caught it. He played baseball. In hands. Okay. Now, again, I fucking love pretzels. They don't look bad. Ooh, I like the way that looks. They actually look pretty good. I Again, I haven't had one that I liked, so I'm a judgmental son of a bitch when it comes to snacks. Okay. I'm going to smell it. Mm-hmm. It smells like a pretzel. Right. It smells pretty good. My mouth's watering. <laughs> do, do you think I'm about to be rocked and this be the first one that I like? Th- this smells pretty good. This, this smells, smells like an actual pretzel. You're optimistic right now. I like I, it. I, this is the first time I've ever been excited. I'm going to break it in half and take a bite out of the middle. For Don't it. chew it into the microphone. People didn't like that last time. You mean like ASMR shit, that weird stuff? <sighs> I've got I feel like we can do some type of ASMR. I'm going to eat a bite of this Pop-Tart. Hmm. He's pretty quiet, everyone. I think I'm getting a win today. Let's hear it, dude. I want to warm it up because it's probably be- even better. You, Mr. Mr. Bodybuilder, wants to fucking warm up food. Bro, this is pretty good. I'm floored. I have a, I have something to say about it. I'm going to just take another bite here. I don't think I got a lot of salt in that bite. 
I'm mm. with you. I think warming it up might. I mean, it's pretty good. Listen, this is this is good. It I'm, is. I'm I'm impressed. I I mean, finally they did something right. I wouldn't be surprised because it's pretzels, and I love pretzels, but the salty and sweet, like they nailed it. I wish I got a little more pretzel flavor though. Mm. Like I'm just I'm tasting like just that chocolate fudge type flavor. I like the sweet and the salty, but I'm not complaining. I mean, it could taste more like a pretzel, but it doesn't taste like a regular pop tart. Like it doesn't taste have that regular pop tart flavor. Doesn't taste like shit. Like you ready for something else? You got more? I got the other pretzel <laughs> flavor too. It's cinnamon sugar. Who broke into that box? <laughs> Mike. That bastard. So, so this... he knows before we do. You can't leave anything around him. No. Oh, <laughs> no, not with what he did with Altoids this fucking weekend. <laughs> Bro, the dude, Shane. We got a great story about this. <laughs> fucking Mike ate an entire fucking pack of, of, of Altoids. Had a whole pack of Altoids. Is whole, that, whole 10. Is that healthy? No, it's not. No. You actually Shane. can, you can. <laughs> so I like. Shit your pants. That's what happens. <laughs> yeah, so. So my, I was like, Mike, I was like, how, how is it that you're a fucking small child? What do you have to do? Like watch over you while we're, while we travel? The only reason I know not to eat a whole thing of mints, Adeline ate an entire thing of mints when she was like nine years old. Nine or ten. It was, she, I think she was nine or ten. She ate a whole fucking pack of uh, these mints. And like all of a sudden, she's like, my belly doesn't feel good. I'm like, well, what'd you eat? She's like, well, I ate some mints. I'm like, Adeline, how many mints did you eat? <laughs> she's like, well, I ate the whole, the whole pack. And I'm like, you ate a whole pack of mints? I was like, you're on the toilet for the next fucking day. Yep. Sure enough, dude, that kid was pissing out her ass for like for a good three, four hours. Like, belly was m- m- not cool. So, like, you know the whole, like, Mentos in the uh, yeah, in in soda? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> Mike was in pain, but not just from the fucking tin of mints. It was from the tin of mints. The 15 to 25 gummy worms and two bang energies. Oh, oh the my day. God. In like a six hour period. <laughs> oh, he was fucked. Up. Oh, oh no, he was he fucked was... up. He couldn't even eat dinner. Like, no, he, he... he wasn't, like, he was into his food at the steakhouse, but he didn't even finish his steak. You oh, know, yeah. You know what I call that? What's that? Rookie mistake. Oh. oh, yeah. It was, it was, I was like, Mike, I can't believe this. <laughs> oh, man. All right, I'm I'm excited to try the other one. All right, so this is pretzel cinnamon sugar. Yeah, so the pretzel cinnamon sugar one, instead of the uh, instead of the pretzel chocolate. Thank you. Here, um, give me half of that for Shane. Yeah, I'll pass it over. Mm. I'm gonna take a whiff. Oh, I am a oh, cinnamon man. sugar. Yeah. Man, I can't believe I talked all that shit on Pop Tarts and now I'm eating them and like liking it. I'm, and, I'm comparing this to Auntie Anne's. This is what it smells like a little bit. Hmm. They use the same brown sugar and the, the, the cinnamon sugar as they do in the other one. Back mm. away from the microphone. You're chewing in it. I can hear you. Oh, please. You get out of here with that shit. Mine's muted. Oh. He just dropped it everywhere. Made a huge mess. Fuck off. I'm going to make Shane clean it up later. (laughs) Oh, man. Bro, that warmed up with a cup of coffee. I'm done. I can't say shit ever again. I'm eating this. I'm depleted. I didn't even eat since I've been home from Texas. (laughs) Listen, I'm wrong. I'm wrong about this Pop-Tart. So far, out of the 37 Pop-Tarts I've eaten, (laughs) I hated them fucking all. (laughs) This one here, these two are really good. The pretzel Pop-Tarts are good. I definitely would heat them up and enjoy them uh, in the morning. I'll get into how I feel about their fucking macros in a second. They're fucking awful. But these are good. The chocolate's better. Uh, I, I, like, I like the chocolate better. Cinnamon, cinnamon sugar. I like them both. I can't believe I'm saying that. After, I'm a chocolate guy. Bro, I've been talking shit on Pop-Tart for a couple years now. I know. And now like everybody's finding out how much it is, and this is like the second one I've tried, and it's actually good. I saw there was another fairly new one, a chocolate cupcake. One. Someone, oh, yeah. someone posted on the yeah. Action Sludge page. I don't know. It, it, it might be, you know, like, it, these are geared towards these are geared towards children. And here we are, adults, fucking with our extensive palates being assholes. And they're out just fucking. How yeah. about how much Pop-Tarts were in Australia? Remember oh, that? Oh, yeah. What were they like? Like 20 bucks. Yeah. 
they're like and these different, are like three, different ingredients. Yeah, three seventy nine over at Walmart. Fucking yeah. nineteen ninety nine in Australia for a pack of thing of Pop Tarts. They might have been good though because remember you guys didn't like when we drink pop over there like Coke or something. Yeah, like it, it was different. Yeah, it their, didn't make their, their, health, their, he- their health regulations are completely different. Yeah, um, but nope, these are good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get down. You line these up. You want some more, Bob? No. Oh, okay. I mean, I do. I can't. I can't because of the macros. Fat, are... Getting fat looking at them. Dude, all right, look at the macros on fucking Pop-Tarts. This is insane. In two Pop-Tarts, a, a serving size being two Pop-Tarts, right? Yeah, that's what it says. Serving size, two pastries. 390 calories in two pastries. 13 grams of fat, 65 carbohydrates, and four protein. 27 grams of sugar. <laughs> so, I mean, h- half, one, one Pop-Tart would be like six and a half grams of fat and then like 32 and a half carbohydrates and only like 13 and a half sugars. But who the fuck only eats one Pop-Tart? No one. <laughs> you open the bag up, you got to eat the whole thing. These are, these, are, these are horrendous for you. Yeah. I love them though. I like, I, ju- I like. It's, it's like that. Th- I, I mean, like, I don't have kids, but. In you my can't house. feed them these fucking things every day, dude. No way, dude. I like no. We ha- Emmy gets one here and there. She, Adeline don't. She don't fuck with pop tarts. Mm-hmm. Adeline doesn't like pop tarts. Adeline likes real food. Yeah. Emmy likes sweet shit. She's got the fat kid gene in her. She likes the sweets. She loves snacks. Adeline's ice cream and like just food. Food. These are not good for you. Brown no. sugar cinnamon was always my favorite. Man, those are actually good. I talked I like all that them. shit on Pop Tarts for everything. I'm still not. I'm still not sold. Every other one, fuck you, Pop Tart. You won one. You won one battle. The war is not over yet. I'm gonna try and ruin your company and take everything over. <laughs> I feel like I got a big win out of this. You did. Yep. I do it. have. I do have more snacks, by the way. Just in case you're wondering. All right, I'm looking under the table. <laughs> I want to show you more than your gan. You want more. <laughs> oh. Okay, they fuck. <laughs> Oreo, <laughs> my favorite. The most stuff. I haven't, I haven't tried these yet. The most stuff. This is how, out of hand. How thick are these? I don't know. Things? That's why I bought them. I bought them because I wanted to see. Open that fucking thing. Oreo up. is my favorite. Oreo is my favorite, just because all of them are good, dude. Every single Oreo. If there's a limited edition Oreo. I haven't had one that I was disappointed in yet. Mm-hmm. And I saw these when I was looking for these fucking Pop Tarts. And I was like, oh, yeah, I got to get these. Um, I'm, I can't, I'm not going to eat these right now just because just I want to eat real food here in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I don't want to eat one. But I want to look at them. Yeah, I want to see I one. I want to smell them. Yeah. Probably going to eat one after I train. So let's check them out. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. So it's like if you took the center of two double stuffs. Oh, yeah. I thought they'd be bigger. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> it's like her talking about my nuts. I thought they be like this thick. Really? I don't know. No, I guess not. I mean, fuck it. I'm, I'm going to eat one anyway. <laughs> I picked it up. <laughs> you fat fuck. We, you might as well pass one over here. Oh, fuck yeah. Or this is so good. Mm. Oh yeah, that's all they did during manufacturing. They laid down two uh, double stuff. Yeah, you can see the mm-hmm. the separation there. Mm. You want one, Shane? Oh uh, no, I'm good. All in. They're so good. Mm. I have a cavity. I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> I have a dentist appointment next week. It's I in sh- there. I just was at the dentist. Good. Broke another tooth. Did that's you? Awesome. Yeah, same one. Mm. Gotta get that, gotta, yeah. I know. Get the jackhammer going. Oh, I hate the fucking dentist. All right, a den- worst place on the planet. Found a good dentist out here, though. Yeah. They're good. Fuck yeah, dude. He's a good dude. Whole family run thing. They just do ex- they They make me feel good, even though my mouth is a fucking nightmare. They, like, don't judge me. Yeah. I'll pay extra if you don't judge me at the dentist. <laughs> oh, look. Uh, good job being here. Well, you need to get your teeth cleaned and take care of them and this and that. Yes, I know, I know. I just have shit teeth just from everything I've done. But they make me feel better. Did you ever go to the dentist and they just make you feel like shit? 
Like you are a piece of shit for having shitty teeth. Oh, your gums are a little inflamed. I'm like, yeah, dudes, from you fucking poking at them. Stop poking them. Stop poking at them. I don't know. Looks like gingivitis. No, they're swollen from you poking at them. Stop poking them. Yeah, Why am I your, gum, your gums are bleeding. No shit, they're bleeding. No, this place, they just do, they're... Dennis is so awkward. Yeah, get those the fuck away from me. I saw you about to go for another one. I, no, I was going to close it up. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> but listen, Bob, Bob is horrible with sweets. They literally cannot be in my home. I will sit and eat that whole fucking pack. That is crazy. Well, I'm, I usually get pretty tuned up at night, so that's... <laughs> A little stoned up. That's like half the problem. <laughs> Fucking strong indica and you are eating out, eating everything. Everything. How crazy is that about weed too? That's what, again, it goes back to a fascination I have about, about uh, marijuana just because, you know, usually higher end weed. Yeah. And it's like they all have, they all, they all have different, different purposes. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought I was a sativa guy until I smoked a heavy sativa, and then all of a sudden I'm like, I can't fucking go to sleep at night, and I feel like cleaning the house and yep. thinking so deep about life, and I'm, I'm in it. It's 2 a.m. I'm like, I'm a white. Let's watch this movie. This movie's great. Stoned to shit. It's like I didn't, it's like I'm not even, it's like I'm not high. It's just expanding my fucking way of thinking about things. Yeah, I, I thought I was a sativa guy for the longest time. I was lying to myself. No, I like a hybrid with, a, with heavy on the indica side. And then you smoke a strong indica and just sink into the couch. Question your, your breathing and what's going on. And if you are who you are, am I me? Are, oh, h- hello? Hi. Yes. Yes, you are. Are you high? Am I what? Am I what? Hi. Hi. Hello. hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's um, oh man. I I will say that um, man, I I, I really do indu- enjoy uh, smoking good weed, just because it expands the way I look at things. Mm-hmm. It really does. It's uh, uh, there's a difference between good weed and shitty weed too, like Jungle Boys. Oh yeah, Jungle Boys, fuck my shit. I love Jungle Boys. So fucking tasty too. S- still need to find a way to have a constant supply of Jungle Boys. Yeah. Yeah, Jungle Boys, if you're listening, hello, hi, hi. <laughs> are you? <laughs> My what? Hi, <laughs> hello. <laughs> no, that talk about uh, perfecting a craft. Yeah, dude. I mean, I'm quite the connoisseur. I've I've tried just about every strain on the fucking planet. Yeah. And when I go out to L.A. and I can stop in there, man. It's, bro, it's our first stop. Every yep. time me and Kim yep. go to California, it's car our service, first stop. Car service is ordered. Yep. Where are you guys going? Jungle Boys. Jungle Boys. <laughs> you just got off the five-hour play, uh, flight, not yep. going to the hotel? No. Nope. Nope. We're going to go there and then go to the hotel. Kim, don't bitch at all. I love it. No. Nope. Because she knows if I get that done first, I'm not giving her any shit the rest of the fucking nope. trip. Your trips are so cool. You make me feel like I need to take a vacation like you do. Yeah. You're like, how great could it be? All I do is smoke weed. Sit at the beach at a nice hotel right next to a taco joint. Yep. So I'm like, wait a minute. So you go on vacation, smoke some of the best weed on the planet. Yep. Go to a hotel that's just beautiful. They take care of you. Mm-hmm. And then you eat tacos and drink margaritas while you're on the beach. Yeah. Hmm. I set myself up on vacation that I don't have to drive myself anywhere. I don't have to worry about a fucking Uber. I'm going to use my own two legs to get everywhere I want to go. Man. And it's going to be beautiful the entire time because I don't like drinking and driving. I hate depending on a fucking Uber. I oh, hate it. Oh, yeah. As convenient as it fucking is. Don't like it. Nope. I don't want to be somewhere at 2 a.m. and be like, there's no one here to get you, bud. You know, and it's crazy because watching you, like, whenever, whenever, like, we're in that, like, in Vegas, when we go to Vegas for the Olympia, and, like, like how, how, how stoned up we get whenever we go to do something, you're just cruising, dude. It looks like you got no worries in the world. None. None. I'm in my own world. Yep. And anybody that thinks being a stoner is unproductive... Uh, it's like, I think you, uh, you're one of the most productive people I've ever met. Yeah. And you smoke more weed than just about every stoner I've ever met. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm stoned right now. <laughs> didn't even know it. I didn't even know it. I'd question if you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell you what, I uh, I mean, everyone everyone battles their own shit, but I, I, I am very firmly against taking any kind of, like, prescription drugs for any type of reasons Mm -hmm. um we just we just i don't know just settles my mind i can get into my groove i'm 
I'm like you said. I'm I'm com- I'm not big on uh, pharmaceutical drugs. Mm-mm. I don't like Percocets. I don't like painkillers. I believe that they do serve a purpose, mm-hmm. but they are highly addictive. Yep. I watched them ruin multiple people's lives, and it, it happened close to home with me. Yep. Really bad stuff. Mm-hmm. And anybody that thinks it's not real, it's very real. Uh, with 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 marijuana, I, <laughs> I I've smoked a lot. Yeah. The worst thing that has ever happened to me is, is I just fall asleep. I eat way too much and I fall asleep. Like mm-hmm. even though that's kind of silly and this and that. Like no, like I, like ev- like people will be like, oh well, what happens if something bad happens in your life? Same thing with you drinking too much alcohol, dude. Yeah. There is way more fucking bad things that have happened in my life from me drinking too much in comparison to me smoking too much. Like, what about, oh, you won't be able to, like, you won't be able to do something if you get too stoned. Bro, if you drink too much, you can't drive. No. I mean, you can't, it's, in the, it's in the same category of it, but, like, I don't, not, not in that sense. Mm-hmm. But I see way less, um, there's way more pros than there are cons. I like burning one doing cardio. That's a good time. I also I get fucking it. lost in that shit. Oh yeah. Sometimes I might dog it a little bit. And I don't know it, but <laughs> well, that's what a good sativa's for. Yeah. I took a couple puffs. I mean, many a times, and I take a couple puffs in the morning with a cup of coffee, strong cup of coffee, yeah. do cardio, and I'm like, how am I high, sweating, and I am just thinking about work so clearly right now. Now I just take a couple puffs. I'm not going crazy, and I'm like, I feel like this is going to be a fucking stupid great day. Yeah. And it and since it's so good, like it just kind of fades. Mm-hmm. It, like it, it the, the 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 high fades out. It's not like an abrupt like. Uh, uh. No, you're not crashing. No, because you're not waking it, up hungover. No, <laughs> no, like, even, like even in the God, morning. No, good. yeah, really, really, really. Um, it's just high quality stuff. Yeah, well, that goes that goes back to the quality. Yeah, you're not you're not getting these same effects from. Now I will tell everybody if you're like, oh, maybe I should try it. Please. Just if you don't, don't. If you do, you know what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, now, if I go nuts and I feel like fucking smoking a fatty to myself, <laughs> I better be in for a wild ride. Yeah. I tell you what, the fucking funniest thing that happened to me was whenever uh, my brother and I were big movie buffs. Yeah. Before Jake got all tied up and married and stuff, ruined his life. Um, <laughs> 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 or I should say, ruined my life. <laughs> Jake and I did so much together. Uh, <laughs> we went to football games together. We used to go to the movies all the time together. And then he goes and gets all married and wifed up. Fucking asshole. Um, <laughs> no, it's a, just kidding. But uh, Jake and I used to go to the movies a lot. Yeah. When a new movie would come out, we'd go together. And this is when he was in, whenever he was in school, chiropractic school, got out of school, everything. We always did something together. And it was pretty regularly because we both loved movies, mm-hmm. we're big movie buffs. And uh, this one time, I had really good weed. We had Tasties. I call them Tasties. Yeah. Got all fucking stupid stoned up and went to see Avatar. <laughs> okay. okay. So this was a long time ago. Yeah. We go, we go in, and I'm walking in, and I'm fucking tuned up. I'm like, yeah, man, because I, I love getting lost in movies. Mm-hmm. Like, I work so hard at everything that I do Excuse me. that I want to get lost. I want to go into the movies, and I want to be completely opened up to someone's mind and craft. That's why I'm into really good movies. And I don't want to be thinking about work. I don't want to be thinking about anything. I want two to three hours of my time to be absorbed, and I'm in the movie. Motherfucker, I want to be one of them. I want to be there. I want to be in it. Yep. Love it. Yeah. We go in. I'm high as fuck. I get a big, giant Diet Coke. We get some popcorn and I get some fucking, uh, I think we got milk duds. Mm. Love milk duds. Yeah. Again, fuck my teeth all up. I'm a junior mint guy. I like those too. Yeah. So go in there and we're sitting there and I'm like, I'm fucking high as a motherfucker. I'm stupid high. I'm like, okay. (laughs) And I'm in it. I'm like, "Um, everything's gone. Phone's turned off. I'm like, I can't wait to be one of these blue people. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm like, this is because it's a. It was a big time movie. It was like it changed the way movies are done, CGI and all that shit or whatever it is. Yeah, it was like ten years to make the fucking. Thing. Oh yeah, big deal. Yeah. So the movie and it was 3D. We had the glasses on. Yeah. So I mean, I am blazed up, loving life, so excited, and all of a sudden the movie starts and the 3D starts going, and I'm in it, and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, 
It, it's like we're like three minutes into the movie, and I'm glued into my seat. Oh, my God. I don't know if I can handle this. I think I have to fucking leave. I have to fucking leave. I can't fucking handle this. I can't. What, what's going on right now? And I look over at Jake, and he's like, <gasps> just staring up with this dumb look on his face, looking at the movie. And I'm like, he's definitely with me right now. Am I overthinking this? I'm like, calm down. Have a drink. Eat the popcorn. Get ready for the blue people. <laughs> so, like 10 minutes later, I completely forgot everything and yeah. I became a blue person. <laughs> you became you became the creature. Oh, oh, yeah, man. Like, that's why I want to see the new Star Wars movie. I'm not really into Star Wars, but the new trailer got me. Yeah. And I, and I, again, I'm probably late to the movie scene with it all, but I want to see it just because, like, I love getting lost in it. I work so fucking hard at everything. I just want to get lost. Yep. I want to enjoy it. I want to enjoy someone else's craft. And if it's fucking stupid great, yeah. yeah. Make me feel like I'm Darth Vader or something. Make me feel it. That's why I love like Tarantino movies. Oh, yeah. He sets the, the stage so well and like the environment. I feel like I'm there. That's like, the I'm, whole I'm point. I'm actually there. You, that's the point of a good yeah. movie. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and again, whenever, whenever I get a little stoned up and go, it's like I'm... Uh, it, it, Again, it's with good weed. It laser focuses you into it, and you it's you're there. Mm-hmm. I think that that's one of the reasons that I my mind is ex, it thinks the way it does is because I, it expands. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like I'm open to anything and just learning and not no judgment. All the good shit. Uh, you could put me in front of a, a in front like Star Wars. Do I look like somebody that enjoys Star Wars? No, not really. But guess what? I watched a couple of them. Felt like I was, I should just start flying a fucking plane. Like I could be a pilot. Could you imagine being an actor? You can be anyone. I could be anyone. It'd be great. Then just don't start believing that you are. Yeah. Like if you're a pilot in a movie, don't be like, I can fly this plane now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing that to me. Can you imagine like Keanu Reeves just walking around thinking he could just assassinate anybody? <laughs> John fucking Wick shows up just nuts. <laughs> I mean, I have to say, if I saw him walking down the street in a black suit, like... Here's here's the thing, though. Like the, fuck out. the dude legit trains like that, so he is... A tactical badass. It's if, really cool. It, could you, like, I, being the fuck-offs that we are, I would definitely be John Wick for a day, like, if I was Keanu Reeves. Oh, yeah. If he walked down the street black-suited out and you saw him walking like that with a dog, everybody would be like, oh, fuck. Because this baller. Is this actually going to happen right now? Yeah. Are we going to see him let loose? <laughs> I, I want his skill set so bad. That's my. Uh, but I can't... like, you need you need the whole look to be that badass too. Oh, dude, it's not. I mean, just the little bit of shit that we've done with guns and how and, mm-hmm. and everything that I know and, and the training that I've done, bro. I I can't wait to be able to get more into that. Mm-hmm. Do more of it. You know, close quarter combat shit. He's on a different level with it. Oh yeah. Even uh, uh what's her name was in uh. Halle Berry. I mean, yeah. Did you watch John Wick three finally? Yeah. Awesome. Fucking awesome movie. Awesome. Did you see a chain? Yeah, I saw it. It's awesome. They, Hannah, I, so I watch it again every time. Now it's on HBO or something. So yeah. every time at night, like 11 o'clock, it's on. I'm like, here it is. Yep, put it on. Half of the movie, halfway in, beginning, end, I put it on. And she's like, why do you like this shit so much? I'm like, fuck is wrong with you? Get out of here. This is the coolest thing in the world. No one can kill him. No, no one. Nope. That's what's so great. Baba Yaga. I don't... I don't. <laughs> Boogeyman. The Boogeyman. I Fucking love it. Right. So, bro, like, they God's, they plan on making those fucking movies till no one wants to go see them anymore. There, there could be like John Wick Ten. I hope it's like a Fast and the Furious where they just ride the shit out of. Bro, it. Well, well, that, I read an article. I hope so, yeah, yeah. He said four and five. He signed on for four and five right now. Yeah, motherfucker. Three was bigger than two and one. Four is going to be awesome. It's the only series like that, that are progressively getting better. It, it, it guess what? It's like Die Hard. This is today's Die Hard. John yeah. McClane. Like everybody loved one, two, and three. You know what I mean? Like, they're just made, even though I think Die Hard with a Vengeance is my favorite. I'm a huge, huge Samuel L. Jackson fan. I love Samuel L. Big fan. I like to think that, like, when I... I can be a movie buff. Like, if I was an actor, I'd want to be Samuel L. Tall, dark, and handsome. <laughs> yelling at everybody, calling him motherfuckers. <laughs> That's me. The next uh, action sledge ad, you could be John McClane and Darcel could be Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> Okay, uh, Why can't Seth be Samuel L. Jackson? Hey, you know ways? <laughs> That'd be I'll be, I'll be Bruce Willis. I'll be bald with a big dick. I Let's love Bruce go. Willis. Apparently, he's hung like a horse. No shit. Yeah, I've heard Hog that down there. Huh? I, yeah, I've heard that in the articles. They said it. Hmm. I mean, not far off. <laughs> Just got to shave my head. Tripod. I like Bruce Willis. 
Fuck yeah, he's awesome. Yep, big fans. I love it. Yeah, big movies. I, I love them. I haven't really watched many movies lately. I'm picky now. Oh, yeah. Also, the fucking liberal bullshit drives me up a fucking wall. How yeah. I just don't like, I don't like the opinions of people about things that they really shouldn't butt their noses in. Like, please just make movies and do what you're good at. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you have a platform or something, that's great. But, I mean, I know we inject some of our shit, but not, not, nothing negative or bad. Like, whoever you want to vote for, vote for. Do what's best for your family. Do what's best for your people. Don't fucking tell me about it. Don't tell me about income equality, you fucking overpaid dickhead. Well, that's, what's, uh, I forget his name. The dude that did the, uh, he was the host of like an award, like a recent award ceremony. Ricky Gervais. Oh yeah, dude. Did you, awesome. did you hear his, his oh, yeah. remarks and stuff? Fucking great. Like just shut the fuck up and come up, get your fucking special award. And get the Sit fuck down. out of here. <laughs> that dude don't give I a fuck. I paraphrase. It's way better coming from that him. Dude, that it's dude hilarious. don't give a fuck at all. Fuck no. It's awesome. That's what's great about comedians. Yeah. So I loved it. I, I will one day, I will go, I will put a skit together to go do open mic at a comedy store. I'll love it. I'll tell all kind of fucked up stories. <laughs> I'm definitely going to do it. I'd love to. I've always been a fan of comedians. Grew up with them. My, my parents watched comedians. Mm-hmm. I was watching fucking Eddie Murphy raw. Oh, like, my God. I was like 10 years old with my dad. <laughs> Yo, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> that fu- raw with Eddie Murphy is one of my favorites, just because he does his Richard Pryor impression, and then Bill Cosby and how that, that, that whole part there. It's yeah. awesome. Dennis Leary, huge Dennis Leary fan. Fucking so raunchy and wrong. <laughs> awesome movie the ref have you ever seen the ref it's a holiday movie with kevin spacey no and then he ends up uh and then he's like the the robber that gets caught up in the christmas it's during christmas time and he gets caught up with that family no, really fun i never saw it oh fuck it's dennis leary is awesome huge fan just you got five years on me yeah i again i've watched almost every fucking movie under the sun mm-hmm I've seen a ton. Back in the day, anything pre-2000, I've probably seen. What did you just tell me to... You added two movies to my list that I need to watch. The Goon. The Goon? Yeah. Yeah. We got on that topic because me and Kim went to her first hockey game. Yeah. And she was freaking out. She's never seen anything like it. Yeah. And uh, I forget who it was from the Penguins. I don't fucking follow Mm -hmm. hockey. But the dude was in the box three fucking times in like a period. (laughs) And she's like... It's like that's his job. I'm like, babe, that's his job. He's the goon. Yeah, he's the, he's the enforcer. Goon. I didn't have the name for it. Oh, uh, bro, a great movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, uh, Doug, Doug Glatt is who it's about. It's actually based on a true story. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Dude has no fucking <laughs> skill except fucking people up. It's <laughs> awesome. Really good movie. That, and then what else did I tell you? You got to see the program. Oh, yeah. That, Another football about movie. That. Uh-huh. There was something else that we brought up this week, and I can't. I can't remember what it was. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, no. We'll probably talk about it again. Yep. We talk about the same six things over and over. I love it. (laughs) Whiskey, steaks, pussy, weights. Pretty much it. Yep. Yep. Four. (laughs) Four. (laughs) Oh, man. Did you you guys, uh, when you were down there, did you catch any of the UFC fights? No. 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 I I didn't even see any highlights. I I know. I saw. It wasn't. it, It. uh, I didn't follow do much on Instagram. We were fucking stupid busy. Yeah. Dude. It, the amount of people that showed up was out of control. And then uh, in the evening, I just kind of shut down. Like whenever I'm there, I talk. What was it? <laughs> what was it? We showed up at nine, eight thirty. Yeah. And went till like seven. Yeah. Whole day talking to people. Nonstop. Fucking hundreds of people. Yeah. It was crazy. Oh, I guess it was a weird time too. I didn't even think about that. Texas two hours behind? No, one hour. One hour just behind. One hour. Yeah. Then yeah. it, it would have. St- main event would have started seven. Yeah. You were slammed. Was it? Um, uh, Curtis Blades versus uh, Junior Dos Santos in the main event. Who won? Curtis Blades. No shit, he beat him. Uh, knockout, yeah. Uh, Dos Santos has to be done. Yeah, beat him in the second round. He's done. Yeah. Time he to has to be. Up. Yeah. yeah. I knew, like I said, I didn't see it, and he just the, can't keep getting fucking knocked out, dude. No, the main event was good. What I mean, about Cyborg? Did she win the belt back or something? She shit? did. Who'd she yeah. beat? Um, I don't, I couldn't even tell you. Yeah. But she, uh, yeah. I she think she knocked back. her out. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure. Man. Yeah, fourth belt, I think. Animal. <sighs> Amanda Nunez is better. Yeah. Hard to beat that one. I wouldn't fight anyone. No. Or everyone. <laughs> everybody everybody was everybody got a kick out of you beating people with aluminum bats. <laughs> They're like 150? You fucking you see, kidding if me? You see fucking little kid, if you see Bob with a bat and take your kids away. Yep. 
giving me all kinds of shit too about wanting to take the the fastball to the ribs. I'm excited to I'm see like, all the comments. I, I posted that this morning. I want to see. Yeah. I want to see it. See the comments. Bro, I'm not getting punched in the face if I don't have to. I'm not getting fucking beamed by a 106 mile an hour fastball or hit by Killer Ray. I'm not getting hit by Killer Ray, but Could you, that dude was a fucking savage. Oh. He's scary. He's like a monster on the like running at you. It's yeah, dude. It's awesome. Mm-mm. Awesome. Change the change the game of football. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Super Bowl coming up. Yes. Uh, yeah. Let's next podcast. We're definitely going to take some bets. Yeah. Let's do some betting. Be good times. I got a dollar. I got a dollar. I got a dollar. I don't I bet on football go. anymore. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up, Shane. Hey, Shane. Shane has lost so much money on fucking football this year. I suck at year. football betting. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You did have a rough. You oh, did have look a at rough him. Look at the face. He's yeah. like, no, dude. Yeah. I lost all my money. <laughs> Only UFC fights now for me. I, I did good. I, I think I won four out of six fights. Yeah, you had a good. Uh, yeah. You missed that parlay. Zach, Did you? Yeah, I missed the second part. Yeah. Of it. yeah, but I won the first one. So after that, I really didn't care. Yeah, I love how Zach and, and Pat are so much alike. They're both numbers guys. Yeah. So like they just look at analytics and statistics. And Remember, just uh, we saw the graphic. I think it was on Barstool about uh, betting on the color Gatorade. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for the Super Bowl. Yeah. Do you see on Barstool they posted what color is the Gatorade bath going to be? Of course. And and I was like and. Bob's like, oh, look at this. And I'm like, oh, man, this is great. And we're like, we got to get Zach's take yeah. on this. So I immediately messaged, messaged Zach about it. And Zach goes, he goes, Patrick Mahomes drinks purple Gatorade. <laughs> and I'm like, no, he doesn't. He said that he thinks he saw, he's pretty sure Patrick Mahomes drinks purple Gatorade. He's like, find out what Gatorade the quarterbacks drink. And he's like, and put your money on that. Mm. Take the chance between. The, if Patrick, he's like, I'm almost positive Patrick Mahomes drinks purple Gatorade. And he's like, then find out what Jimmy G drinks. And he's like, I would bet on one of those two. I'm like, that's your fucking logic. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, bro, it's, it's not a bad logic because if you think about it, if that's the Gatorade, if there's a cooler that's just for the quarterback or whatever, I don't know how the fucking sidelines work or anything, but it, my limited knowledge about it, I'm going to probably do that. Because if the purple Gatorade was going off, it's plus 1,400. So if I might throw a hundred bucks on a purple Gatorade, and if it's purple Gatorade because and Patrick Mahomes wins, I'm gonna be up fourteen hundred bucks, bro. See, but don't you think like the staff, like the training staff, or whoever fills that Gatorade, are like getting persuaded? They're like, hey, I'll throw you. Oh, absolutely, bucks. but I also think that if they fucking take any any of that shit, they lose their job. Bro, people on a sideline True. gets paid fifty grand a year. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think, and they, I mean, you also can't fucking piss off the quarterback or you, the fucking. Yeah, no, I'm, know. I'm, I'm, I'm excluding that, and I understand where you're coming from, mm-hmm. throwing a game or throwing anything like that. But I'll take, um, I mean, throwing the Gatorade. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take Zach's opinion. Maybe it's just because I like it and it sounds good. He's very logical with his bets. No, I'd, I'd take his side too. Yeah, I feel like he just speaks facts about things, not like he does give us that, give us that vibe. Like he's very confident in himself. I love it. Another fucking Pat, Pat trait. Yeah. Boomer. I like money, and I like winning. <laughs> that's those two. Yeah. Like, that's, be like, yeah. that's why I'm going to go buy the Lambo Urus before him, just to beat him. <laughs> Fuck him. I don't care if I go broke. <laughs> just beat you. <laughs> oh, man. Good times. Ah, We had snacks today. We had a great weekend. I only had one cup of coffee. Yeah. I'm ready for the question, Shane. Um, All right, everybody. I always, again, thank you for listening. We're going to finish the podcast off with Ask the Internet Questions, questions more fucked up than you are. Um, We do this so that you guys all can ask your people uh, in your circle, your coworkers, your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, your grandma. These are fucked up questions. They're supposed to be fun. Don't take them too serious. Don't, don't, Don't give me the, oh, my God, I can't believe you said that. This is a podcast for the fucking hardworking motherfuckers of the world. We're supposed to have fun. Work hard, play hard, guys. This... I'm excited because I know there's going to be at least one fucked up one. Shane looks way too confident right I'm now. I'm nervous. There's definitely a dick question in there. Um, for sure. For sure. But anyway, uh, again, please ask your people these questions. Have fun with it. Please, the one thing that I ask you through this podcast is the fact to support what we're doing. Spread the word. Tell your friends to watch and listen to podcasts. All we want is the good shit in the world. We want positivity. We want you to have fun. We want you to become a better person for more people in your lives. So again... Please share this podcast. Tell everybody about it. Tell your mom. Tell your dad. Tell your pastor. He's probably going to like it. (laughs) 
All right, everybody. Now it's time for Ask the Internet. Shane has three questions. So, Shane, I'm ready. All right. Are you ready, Bob? Let's go. I thought I'd throw like an education one in here now, too. So, okay. switch right. it up. All right. So, this is Debate the Internet. What are your top three gas station snacks of all time? Oh, yeah. Oh. Great, great call. Yeah. I love that. Good. That's a nice, clean one. Yeah. Starting clean. I'm a pretzel guy. Love pretzels. Love pretzels. I will always, I also like really, really salty pretzels. Uh, number two would be cheddar Chex Mix. Bob hates cheddar Chex Mix, but he sees my reasoning behind it. Would everybody like to hear my reasoning behind it? Because I can eat the shit out of it and not feel like a fat fuck. Light on the belly. It's light on the belly. I can eat a whole bag of it. I don't care about the macros in there. It just feels light on my belly. Yep. And then drink wise, I'm either going to go with like a flavored beverage, like, um, like a flavored water, like a Propel. Maybe a buy drink. Uh, but if I go for a soda pop, I go Diet Sprite. But if I'm driving, probably like I might just fuck my insides up, go with a Diet Mountain Dew. Hmm. Very rare, though. I usually am pretty good about my energy, so I like a Diet Sprite. Mm -hmm. Those are my three. Bob, you're up. All right. So I'd have my original three like before I met you, and then... I, I, I take in everything you do. Uh -huh. I, I, I eat those snacks now because I know how shitty I'd always fucking feel coming out here driving from Reading and eating whatever the fuck I want. I, I, I always feel like I have to keep my fuckability up. Like I was always big. Like I'm thinking I'm make a, making a really good choice and I'll grab like a Cliff Bar. That sticks in your fucking stomach and makes you feel like shit. At least it does to me. For sure. So when I go, well, we were just in Texas, I'll get pretzels for sure. Um... I like to get like a G2 Gatorade, mm. refreshing yet mm -hmm. not all the yep. bullshit. Yep. Um, I also like buy drinks, the coconut. Love the coconut drinks. Coconut pineapple was my favorite. Cheez-Its. Big cheez -It fan. I like the white cheddar. Mm. And I actually like, the Cheddar Jack. I like the original. I like salty ones. Yep. Toasty. I mean. Is that good? Yeah, I think that's it. I always I, feel I like, like... I do like getting a pack of gummies. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. You know, you, just because I'll have a, have a couple of them and then just putting them away. Always nice to have something sweet. Yeah, I got sour watermelons when mm. we're down there. But my thing, my big thing is on my way home from a trip, I'm just assuming that these are trip snacks. Yeah. I like this way because I always feel like I have to keep my fuckability high. Yeah. Fuckability always, ha always has to be up. And if my belly is distraught and all screwed up, I can't fuck like I normally would. So on my be... way home, like last night, coming home, mm -hmm. I wasn't eating anything heavy. Even though I made 35 pumps, I didn't want those 35 pumps to be anything less than my best. No. <laughs> You're right. You don't want to go in there have to be precautious about, like, uh, some belly trouble. Uh, yeah, I might fart while we're having sex. Uh, It'll be all weird. No. And, and it's going to be inappropriate. Thank God it's never happened to me. Thank God. No comment. <laughs> Next question, please. <laughs> Next. Right. Shane, what's your snacks? Real quick. Um, I like uh, Red Bull, gummy uh -huh. bears, and I like the popcorn chips. I don't know. That's, I forget what the uh, brand is, but they're good. Good call. We Pop like chips. those too. Yeah. Light on the belly. Yeah. Shane also loves Crunch Bars. Oh, I love Crunch Bars. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you are a Nestle yeah. Crunch Bar guy. Yeah. So I guess it depends. I'll either go gummies or I'll go Crunch Bar. <laughs> we traveled to New York, and he got this giant fucking Eminem Hershey bar. <laughs> Motherfucker was massive. I ate it after the gay bar, though. <laughs> <laughs> Had to put something in your mouth, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. You're next to this song. <laughs> I told you fuckers I'm going to fuck with him more. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, uh, pull the internet. <clears throat> Would you rather be half your height or double your weight? <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is a fucking horrible question. So would you rather... <laughs> This is worse than the dick questions. This is so degrading Wait right now. Wait till we get to the third one. I got to do the math on that height for you. What are you going to be? <laughs> I'll be like three feet, man. I'd be, no, I'd be two foot. I'd be two foot, eight inches. This is terrible. I right? am fucking double my weight. I will fucking be 400 fucking pounds before I'm a midget. 
That be, won't happen. You'll be two foot eleven inches, right? Yeah. I don't know. I'm or you'll be four sixty. Four forty. <laughs> or four forty. Four fifty. <laughs> so you're telling me I'm either gonna be under three foot or not able to see my penis. <laughs> Am I able to lose the weight? Like, do I just have to be there and then I can work to lose it? Or like, can I like stretch myself out? Like, how's this work? Is this permanent? No, I think you can work it off. If I could work it off, I'm, I'm definitely 450 pounds. But if this is permanent, this is devastating. This is devastating. Where are you at? Bro, I don't ever want to weigh what I used to weigh. So, or even more. <laughs> but twice as much? There are some advantages being three foot. Yeah. I'm looking for them, but I'm sure <laughs> You can't ride some... the big rides. <laughs> Damn it. Bro, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm already short and people make fun of me. When I don't like taking pictures next to guys that are six foot six. It's like, Jesus, God in heaven, how the fuck are you so tall? Why the fuck are you so tall? What'd you do? I'm, I'm not doubling my weight. Fuck no. I'm doubling my weight. I'm not, I can't do it. I'm short enough. I'm five foot six and a quarter. Oh. I'm three foot. You're three foot? And by I'm kids' sneakers. Pounds. Yep. By kids' sneakers. You yeah. still be good? Save Fuck. money and shit. No way, dude. I'm 400 pounds. What do I have to say? <sighs> you got the same size dick. I mean, that's a scary thing that I always question myself about. That was what I was asking myself. I mean, I'll take half the height then. The ratio. The Make ratio will be kind of fucking dramatic. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm probably four, in some movies. 450 pounds. Nope. Uh, 60% of bar store readers chose to double their weight. Oh, shit. Yeah. 60. Yeah. Still like half, but just well, a little Well, think more. if you're like, if you're for buck 40 or buck 50 and you're 300, like, okay. bad. I don't want to be 480. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, no, not, I'm not happy with my 240 right now, okay? No. <laughs> No, nope. Uh-uh. What about you, Shane? I'm I'm gonna go double my weight. <laughs> double his weight. Yeah. Yep. All right. Got to. Yep. All okay. Right. Next question. Right. This is the last one again. Please ask your coworkers, your friends, your mom, your dad, your pastor. He's gonna like it. I don't think we'll like this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you rather fuck the hottest girl celebrity who has a dick or Vince Vin Diesel with a pussy? Oh my God, Shane! <laughs> this is <laughs> so. I'm I'm either fucking a, a crazy hot celebrity with a dick, or a crazy hot female celebrity with yeah, a dick. Yeah. Or Vin Diesel with a vagina. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Oh my God! I mean, this is pretty easy, right? <laughs> This is not easy, no. I mean, you don't have to touch the dick. (laughs) It said nothing about having to touch the dick. It's just there. Keep your keep your pants on. Keep your dick to yourself. (laughs) Get that thing out of here. Like, so what do I want to hear? That this is it. Do I want to hear the woman saying my name, or do I want to hear Vin Diesel saying my name? (laughs) I went Toretto over there. <laughs> it's about how you drive your car. <laughs> Triple X. <laughs> oh my God! No way. Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh. I have so many visuals going on that is fucking with me right now. All right, so I guess we'll we'll we'll. I uh, uh, I got I got I got, <laughs> I got questions here. I got questions. Just for you and in general about it all. Mm -hmm. Because I think I made my mind up, even though everybody at home, they're in the same position as us. They're naming, like, who the female celebrity is because they're going to have a hard time looking Vin Diesel in the eye. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I ain't looking Vin Diesel in the eye. That's for fucking damn sure. I don't know. I can't do it. No. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. (laughs) Oh, 
All right. <laughs> Who's the woman? Who's your top celebrity? I can't even, I can't nail down a celebrity because it's just so fucked up. But I, all I can think of is like just positioning. Yeah. I'm keeping that dick as far away from me as possible. Yep. Like as long as I don't see it. Stay away from it. Don't touch me with it. Get it out of here. Two other holes. Yep. I'm taking like. <laughs> I'm taking like Scarlett Johansson in her prime. Something like that. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe what's that girl? Like Megan Fox in her prime. I don't yeah. like that. I don't like her. Keep her thumbs out of it. That's as bad as the dick. So now I got to worry about her thumbs and her dick. Um, um, That's a thing, Shane. You, you ever see her thumbs? <laughs> yeah, I have. Yeah, them Wait, club you... thumbs? Yeah. <clears throat> nope. I'll take, uh, I don't even know. I, I'm so mind-fucked right now, but I'll take, I'll take a hot celebrity in her prime with, with, uh, with a mm. little, little mm. Just, just something extra. Just got to pretend it's not there because I am not looking Vin Diesel in the eye and him talking dirty to me. That'd be, that'd be a rough one. All that deep voice, bald head. Nope. No. Nope. Too firm. Get out of here with that <laughs> shit. Fuck off. <laughs> I don't care how many people just fucked with me. Yeah. Everybody go ask yourselves these questions. Fuck you. <laughs> you owe me a 10 second car. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you shit. <laughs> I don't know you a fucking thing. Get out of here with your vagina. Get out of here with that vagina and hairy ass, Vin. Get out of here. I don't want to see none of that. Get out of here. <sighs> All right. What was the? Uh, is there? A, is there? No, a, it was just. Oh, that's just a question. One. There was no. There was no poll on that one. Nope. Okay. I'd imagine. I don't actually know what people would have picked. Man, these questions are just wrong. They. They. <laughs> they were. That's. So you're not. You're not taking Vin either. No. All right. All right, everybody. <laughs> I hope you had a good time today. (laughs) Ask yourselves these questions. Mm -hmm. Again, Shane, read it one more time for everybody. Read that last one so that they can just enjoy it a little bit more. Would you rather fuck the hottest girl celebrity who has a dick or Vin Diesel with a pussy? Mm. That is a... Sounded worse the second time around. I'm reconsidering. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh, All right, everybody. Good times. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. Uh, Again, those three questions are for you to enjoy, spend some time, lighten up your day. This podcast that we're doing is to lighten your day up for you to become a better person. Be motivated. Be inspired. Be the best motherfucker you can be. That's all I want you to do. Spread this podcast. Share it with everybody. Let them know. It's raunchy. It's intense. It's over the top. It's obscene. But it's all about working hard and enjoying your motherfucking life. Thank you again. Spread the word. Fucking A. Love your wife. Love your kids. Don't leave it in too long. You'll make another baby. Bye-bye.